That sucks. That sucks. That's unfair. No problem. Number. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh wow, Megazone. I wonder if I have I wonder if I have that on my shelf. Should I show should I show the people at home? Should I show folks at home what I showed you you uh folks earlier? Okay, all right. So by the way, drum set over there. But let's see. All right, so we're gonna take a little tour around the house, but I was showing them earlier that. <clears throat> we've got we've got every anime that we've ever been in kind of on our shelves. <clears throat> Wise, yeah. That well, we didn't go to the other side either earlier. We got more over here. <laughs> yeah, we got some Aura Battler Dunbine, some Air Gear, uh, Neo Ranga, gosh, Gachimon, Go Danner, Excel Saga, stuff like that. Yeah, that's really cool. But yeah, they give us well, you know. 
they give us uh, Funimation and ADV and those companies usually send you a copy of the stuff you've done. You know, just as a courtesy, you get a free copy. Um, but you know, these days, everything's streaming. So, you know, just you've got I've got a high dive membership. You know, if I want to look at stuff on high dive or check it out or, you know, Funimation now, et cetera. But we were talking earlier before we went on the air that it used to be on VHS tapes. And I, because I started doing voiceover in 89, 98, not 89, 98. Switch that. I'm not that old. Okay. So I haven't been doing it that long. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear how much older. I graduated high school in 1985. And uh, then, and I was, yeah. Oh wow! So so when I when I um, we had everything on VHS tapes back then, and uh, I lost a lot of my VHS tapes when Tropical Storm Allison flooded my apartment in 2001, where I used to live. And after that, I said everywhere I used to move, I would say, "How much water did you get in Allison?" And they had to say none, or I wouldn't move in. So this place got none. Harvey almost got water in here, but no no such luck. Yeah. But yeah, um, gosh, where do we start? What should we discuss? <laughs> what got me into voice acting? Well, voice acting, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it encompasses not just anime, but commercials or anything like that. I, I, did, I had done a couple of commercials. I've been doing voices and maybe impressions and stuff since I was a kid, and I... Uh, liked doing theater and I studied theater all through, you know, grade school. And I went to a performing arts high school here, uh, here in Houston. Um, it's like that people call it the fame school of Houston. It's HSPVA. It's performing and visual arts high school. Um, and they just got a brand new building downtown. So, you know, we're jealous now because we, we went to the old facility, but, uh, <clears throat> in the eighties and, um, oh my gosh, let's see. Um, and then I studied theater in New York City at Juilliard School for a couple mm. of years. And then I moved down. I, I got cut from that program. They used to cut the class down, actually. So everybody was always really scared that they would get cut. And they don't do it anymore because that's all the students could concentrate on. Am I going to make it? Am I going to make the cut? And I didn't make it, but I, I came back down here to Houston and uh, rethought my, my situation and uh, ended up going to film school. And that's how I became a video editor, which is what I do for my primary job. Well, actually, these days I'm freelance. I go between video editing and voiceover. So I record commercials and I record a lot of anime, but I started doing uh, commercials uh, somewhere around the time that I, uh, around late I 80s. I saw one of your commercials that you just did. Yeah, uh, the it, Alamo oh, Park, San Alamo Park and Ride, was it? I, I oh know. yeah, the Metro. <laughs> yes. based on a Game of the one where you were in yeah, the garage with the sword and the armor. <laughs> oh. Parody. Yeah, that's right. The nerd in the garage <laughs> pretending to be John Snow. Um, that was originally that was originally a radio commercial, mm. and uh, and then they decided that it was funny enough that they wanted to film it, and so we filmed it. And you can see it if you go to my website. Uh, I'm JohnGrimion.com. It's there's a work tab, and you can see the commercial there. So I pretended to be Jon Snow, and he's, he's a nerd in the garage. You think you're watching Game of Thrones, and then his wife opens the garage door and goes, Honey, knock it off. You know? and, <laughs> Back um, to reality. <laughs> and that uh, little side note, that, that suit of armor is real. They got hold of a guy who collects real armor from the period. And so this is ancient material oh that you're goodness. wearing. And I can't wow. imagine why any, how anybody could have fought back then because that stuff weighs about 75 to 80 pounds on you. And so the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, yes. you know, it's, it's really, it's like somebody's pressing down on your shoulders yeah. the whole time. It's really heavy. So crazy. But getting back to what we were saying earlier, I started doing some radio commercials uh, uh, for not very much money a long time ago. I didn't know how much money you could make as a voice actor or how much co corporate voiceover uh, gave you or paid, or I didn't know the, I didn't know the industry very well. Um, it's probably a good thing because if I would have tried to make it in the industry, I may not have ever gone to film school. Uh, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I, I'm glad I became an editor. Um, cause I love that too. But when I came back, uh, after, when I graduated from film school, 1995, 
I uh, hung around, I moved back to Houston. That's where the work was. I became a video editor, and I slowly started to get back into voiceover and, and theater again. So uh, ADV Films in the late 90s used to have uh, cattle call auditions every couple of months. They would just have people come down like any other audition, like for a play or anything like that. You'd come down to ADV Films, you'd go to their uh, studio, you'd wait in a room with a lot of other people, and they just call you in one by one. They used to do it every mm -hmm. couple of months because they needed, they needed actors. They needed to cast all this anime that they were starting to produce. And once they got a bigger and bigger um, pool of actors, those auditions started to get less and less frequent, I think. And these days, they, they hire in terms of, I think, you know, they hear somebody's voiceover reel, or if they see somebody at a theater audition, say, oh, they got an interesting voice. Would you like to come read for anime or whatever? But it used to be Cattle Call. And I did one of those in the late 90s and got a, a job with Matt Greenfield, who was the director then at ADV, one of the directors. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, the, the first big role I had was in Bubblegum Crisis 2040. Yep, I've seen that. I played, uh, yeah, I played <laughs> Nigel. The guy who carried all the, the bikes and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. And so that was my first big role. Then we did Martian Successor and Nadesco, and then we did <laughs> Razafon mm -hmm. and, and uh, Gasaraki and Princess Nine and all these, uh, Cromartie High School and all these really, uh, really funny, uh, wait, uh, Excel Saga. Gosh, there was so many of them. And um, small and big roles alike. I, I didn't play a lead role probably until Area 88 was the was the, the video I did. It was the, was the series I did. Uh, I played a photographer, and he was like a lead role. But usually they hire me to do the deeper voiced, you know, kind of either the dad or the cop or the, or a really high pitched, cra Oops. crazy, <laughs> Sorry. huge, and not, much, not very much in the middle. And I do a lot of accents and I was always saying, man, I want to do a British guy and hire me to be a Scottish dude or, or whatever. And, and it didn't happen very often. I had to keep, I had to keep bugging them. But that's how it started out. That's how, um, that's how the voiceover career, uh, in anime at least, started. And then I've been doing, in the meantime, also throughout the years, I've been doing uh, a lot of commercials and a lot of corporate voiceover. Okay. Uh, what kind of acting training? Well, like you said, you went to you know, different schools and everything <coughs> for your acting training. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is the most difficult part of being a voice actor? The most difficult part of being a voice actor, um, mm -hmm. if you're playing roles, and, and this is this happens a lot in anime, and every, a voice actor will tell you this probably. It's not news to you guys. Um, is is the screaming? If you've got to if you've got to play roles because there's yeah. so much intensity in, mm -hmm. in anime. There was even a time there was even a time where I was telling the directors, "Hey man, how much screaming is in this role?" Because I had just done I had just done something like you know Nadesco really wore me out, and because uh, the voice you choose will will determine a lot of that. If you're playing a role where you're doing this a lot, blah, 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 and then you've got to yell a lot, and you're doing that to begin with, it really wears you out. And if you don't learn to use your voice in a certain way, either with a with a coach or with someone else who knows how to tap into a different part of your uh, different area where your voice can come out, the pharyngeal area, I think is what it's called, um, you can really hurt your chords. So, uh, and P and vi voice actors talk about that a lot, especially the ones who play, vi who do video games a lot. I've done a few video games, but not, not like some of my friends have where they have to yell and scream for a couple of hours straight. That really wears your voice down. So I think there's, and I, I think there's been a controversy about that. You know, directors and actors have tried to work with each other better over the years. And I think directors have gotten a lot better about being sensitive to that and saying, okay, look, we'll do this. We'll do the screaming last or we'll do it first one you know what's going to be what's going to be more comfortable for you or we'll do just a screaming session we'll reschedule it for next week so you can just be fresh and all you have to come in here and uh, do is come in here and yell so yeah, that's the toughest part mm -hmm. whatever stuff on your voice yeah. yeah having you guys scream into a mic <clears throat> all the time that definitely is a throat ripper and everything I'm lucky though. I, I, I there are some there are some act compared to compared to some of the other voice actors. I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. I think I've I've heard some I've heard some of my friends do roles. I'm like, how did you do that? How did you how did you do so much Dragon Ball? <laughs> hey, Mel. So much 
Chrono Crusade or or uh, Greg Ayers is a buddy of mine, and he did Chrono Crusade, the lead in that one, and he said it was just a scream fest, just constant, you know. He's always in peril. He's always like, yeah. He's always having an argument. One, he was just oh, screaming yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of lucky. I'm kind of lucky. They go, let's get Grimmy on in here to do the dad. He can just come in and go, what's going on? Or, oh, or something like that. And then I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, and like, okay, I got my line done. I can go home now. <laughs> um, what do you enjoy most about being a voice actor? <clears throat> the fact that you don't have to. Um, necessarily feel great or look great or wear the right thing or whatever on the job you can kind of show up at the studio and do your thing as long as you sound right and as long as you're in the zone uh that's really the only thing you got to worry about and it's it's fun it's fun frankly it's it's a fun job it's it's um it's entertaining uh Anime itself is a little more challenging because you are doing a lot more than... If you do a commercial, like if I go to a radio commercial, I'm just reading a script and I'm just trying to get the sound right and I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. anything else. Anime, uh, when you're watching, you, you are reading uh, lines that you've never seen before and that you didn't rehearse and that you're not aware of, of the plot. You just found out about the plot on the fly as you're going with the director so your your improv skills and your acting skills really come into play. It's not just about we tell people this a lot. It's about not just doing voices. It's about the acting skills is really I think where a lot of it comes in. I think a lot of people will agree with me on that. And <clears throat> when you um, you're not just doing that, but you're also watching on the you've got these days you've got side by side. You got a script over here on a big wide screen in front of you. The microphone is here and then there's a screen with the script. And then on this side is the animation going on. So you are reading these lines while you are in your peripheral vision. If, if so, you're maybe watching the lip flaps to make sure you match them. So you're, you can kind of gauge how you want to play that. You know, if it, the line is short enough, you can read it, repeat it, memorize it. Then you can just watch the lip flaps and make sure that you match it and come up with the right mood and the character and, you know, it takes a few takes to, to usually to get that right, to nail it. And sometimes they can do magic in the studio. If you're close enough, they can just kind of squeeze it and move it around and compress it speed-wise so that it fits. Or they have to rewrite the line or whatever. But it's, it's, it's different balls to juggle at the same time when you're mm -hmm. in the studio. Um, hope that answers the question. Um, and uh, what do you dislike the most? What do I dislike like, the most? I always like acting. acting. No, hmm. couple things. <clears throat> when you're auditioning, when you audition for uh, a commercial, usually in anime, what happens with anime, at least with me, I think with a lot of other voice actors too, is that the director will have you in mind for the role. There won't be much of an audition process. They'll just call you. I think John would be good for this. I think John Swayze would be good for this. I think Lucy Christian is great for this. They and they just call those people in. We want you to. We want to book you. You didn't audition for it. Sometimes there's an audition process. If the role is really important, if they've brought the director in town, they want to bring some people in. But that's rare these days, at least for me. Um, <clears throat> you, when you audition for a commercial or a corporate video or your agent sends you an email, hey, I want you to audition for that. You've been invited to audition for this commercial for Sony or for, you know, uh, Chevron or for, you know, whatever, whatever the product is or the job is. You don't get to go in and meet the director. You don't get to, you know, work any of your audition magic meeting someone. If I audition for a play, I can go in, walk in, meet the director. They take a look at you. You can say, hey, what are you thinking about this? Let's talk about this. Or how is this working for you? If it's not working for you, what would you like me to dial in differently? None of that happens when you're doing a voiceover audition. So when they get your voiceover audition, they're in an office somewhere and they just either hear the first few seconds and if they don't hear that magic they were looking for or thinking about, they can't tell you, hey, could you do this? Could you dial it? And often you probably could, but you won't get the job because you're not there in person meeting them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like they're looking for a bunch of headshots. Nope, nope, nope. You know, they just hear the first few seconds. No, I don't like that. So we're done. You mm. don't get the job. And then you might you might hear it on TV or the radio and you go, I could have done that. <laughs> told me that I needed to sound like this more, I maybe would have gotten the job. So that's that's a bit of a frustrating thing. And then when you're in the studio, 
The other thing that can be a little bit difficult is, is if a director or someone who's directing you doesn't really know how to communicate to you what they want to hear. A lot of jokes are made about that. There's a lot of, uh, um, hmm. if you want to see a funny one, go to YouTube and look up the Santa sessions, like Santa Claus. Santa it's called the Santa session. sessions. It's okay. really, really funny. Somebody cut a video together of Santa just trying to go into the studio and go, ho, ho, ho. And they kept telling him to do it differently and they couldn't get it right. And that's what happens a lot. They don't know how to communicate to you what they want. And you you're miss, you miss each other. Sometimes you can get it right. So, oh, is this what you're looking for? And, and they know how to tell you. And sometimes they just don't. There's I've seen cartoons where, like, little far side cartoons where somebody uh, is just telling an actor, can you sound taller? <laughs> <laughs> sound like you have more hair. You know. Sounds like an Edward no, Elric problem. <laughs> 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 you can't no you can't. Uh, what non-educational requirements and qualifications are needed to become a voice actor that's mostly Somebody a question for me, me. <laughs> that's Somebody for me beside me uh, she wants to know yeah wants to know what non-educational yeah. requirements yes. huh you mean, aside from school, what can you do to prepare yeah. for, yeah. okay, take acting classes, uh, audition for a play, join an improv group, join an improv class, do anything that can rev up your ability and hone your skills at acting and especially at improv to kind of think on your feet. Because one of the most important things, excuse me. Not just in anime, but even doing radio commercials, even doing TV stuff, no matter what you're doing, in terms of voice acting, <clears throat> is all they can hear is your voice. They can't see you. They can't see your expression. You've got to do it all in your voice. So acting really does come into play. So if you haven't taken acting classes or you didn't go to an acting school, just take some. Get with a coach. Get with a private coach. Uh, there's lots of different resources out there, um, just about anywhere, where you can you can you know, get into that. There's also classes you can take online about being a voice, about voice acting. John Swayze himself has a, has a program online. Yeah, about Steve it. Bloom's got one too. Uh, Steve I'm Bloom. Sorry, who? Yeah. He has an online class yeah. too. Yeah. And I yep. think a yep. few other yep. voice actor. Had There's another one. Yeah. I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah, he has a voice acting class. Um, yeah. Somebody. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different <laughs> I can't reasons. remember his name right now, oh. but yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so those all help, you know, anything that helps you, anything that helps rev up your imagination and gets you some, just some practice at, uh, at being able to, to think on the mm -hmm. fly. Uh, even if you're not doing anime, if you're doing a radio, I did a radio, my first radio commercial, I didn't get the job. I got the job and then they got somebody else to fill in because when I showed up, I couldn't come up with what they needed. They said, I want you to sound different than you're sounding, but they couldn't tell me how. And I just kept doing the same voice. And so thinking, being able to have a lot of different stuff in your trick bag to say, oh, you want something else? I got that too. That, that's part of being a professional is being able to say, I've got a lot of different choices. I've got a lot of different air, uh, directions we could take this voice or this role. And let me show you some of what I can do. Mm. So classes and improv helps a lot with that because it, it forces you to start learning how to think on your feet and come up with different stuff on the fly. Mm, yeah, that, that's, that's definitely good. good advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, before you leave us, uh, John, can you give us a little uh, quick shout out again since you gave us one on Tuesday and since you're live? Why don't you go ahead and give us another shout out? Of course. Are we done? Are we done? Well, yeah, it's three, it, for us, it's 319. Yeah. You said you had someone it's come and get 330. After. Oh no no no! I'm 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 at I'm 219 oh. right now. Oh, you want to stay? Oh. So, oh, okay, God. sure. Well, in other words, what? he's gonna oh. keep going. He's gonna else. keep going. We All don't right. mind that. All right. All right. So, what no, are no, the no, most no, common mistakes do you believe fun. aspiring voice like actors long. make? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was like an hour-long video. I was oh, sure uh, an hour and we didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't oh, know. She told me he's only gonna be here for like. 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. I was reading what he said to me on Twitter. That's what that I was reading what he oh, said I'm to me on Twitter. My bad. My bad. Here's the deal. I'm Texas time. I'm central time. You're three o'clock there, but I'm yeah. two o'clock yeah. here. 
So I'm 220. My client's not going to show up for like uh, another hour oh, or so. Okay. So if you want to keep talking, let's go. All right, we can keep it going. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah, yeah what right. are the most common mistake, mistakes do you believe aspiring voice actors make? The most common yes. mistakes? <sighs> Farting in the booth? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I can definitely see that. All right. That's a mistake. You don't want to do that because uh, I'll tell you a funny story. One, <laughs> one time the, the engineer, the engineer heard me make that mistake and then he, he had it on a record. So he kept placing it in Pro Tools later in the anime, like when a bomb would go off. You know, it's like, stop, dude. You know, he kept placing it later. That kind of reminds me of an old, um, it was um, one of Vic's conventions where he was talking about how he was in the anime series Air. And he decided to let a oh, fart yeah. noise out, but it came out of his mouth. And eventually, the the recorder just had it on loop. And I'm thinking, like, oh man, poor Vic. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Big mistake. Uh, let's see. Gosh, uh, mistakes. That's a good. Mm, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I can I can talk more about what I would just discourage people from doing. Uh, this is a little weird. This is kind of a weird one. It's a controversial one, but. Some stage actors and voice actors don't like to be given line readings um, um, in um, in the studio or on stage. And I'm kind of on the fence about that myself. I, I don't mind being given a line reading because sometimes, actually, it helps me. Sometimes if a director, first of all, they're the director. They're the boss. They're the boss. They hired you for a reason. You're talented enough. And it's great to walk in and have a great situation and, and back and forth with a director who's very open to your suggestions or, if, or that's open to you saying, oh, I didn't like the way I sounded right. Can I do it again? Do you mind? Just keep in mind that they're in charge and it's up to them ultimately, but, you know, just try to read the room, mm -hmm. you know, uh, <clears throat> I, one of the most, uh, one, a video that I edited a really long time ago was... Uh, of a choral conductor. He's this really famous choral conductor. And he went, he went to uh, Sam Houston University to uh, get the students, the student choir prepared to sing some really beautiful pieces before an audience at a Christmas concert. And one of the things he said on the video, and I'll never forget it, he said, he was saying, I, that's not the sound I want. I want this sound. I want, oh, you know, whatever. In the, he said, be a professional. Say, if that's the sound you want, here it is. Wow. Right? I've got it. Oh, you want that? I can do that too. <laughs> directors, directors love actors who are versatile and who uh, uh, and, and they'll want to work with you again. If you have not just versatility, but you're open to uh, to different ideas, you don't don't walk in. Uh, don't walk in thinking this is just about your comfort level and your. You know, you want it to go well for yourself, obviously. You want to have good experience, but they're the boss. You know, just be professional. It's just part of being professional. Just keep in mind that, you know, uh, uh, that they are in charge and that ultimately you're working for them. And But be confident that they hired you for a reason. They hired you because you got talent. And just rest assured that you're the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm typing on my phone. I'm streaming on Unlocked because our other um system kind of kicked us out so i'm covering us on both of them okay cool all right okay so what awesome. is your favorite show that uh you've been on mm. i've got a few favorites i really liked doing the desco uh martian successor and the desco a long time ago it was just a funny entertaining anime i watched all of it when it was done i just it, thought it was, it was humorous cool. i really liked yeah, really, really funny. I liked doing it. I liked hearing the results and seeing the whole thing in yeah, context. I'm, I don't. I haven't watched a lot of full anime series. I've watched occasional episodes, but I've not watched very many. I watched all of Excel Saga. <laughs> that's a that's a handful. Uh, you know that that'll wear you out. Um, it was so much energy and it was so wacky. I liked that a lot. I. I uh, I'll never try to watch One Piece because I don't have enough time on this planet to watch I all agree. One Piece. Does. I agree. I'm currently Nobody watching does. One Piece Everybody right does. now, and I'm like at the part where they're in Alabasta trying to get Crocodile right now, and 
Holy cow, I didn't realize it's still going with 900 plus episodes. I'm thinking, yeah, it's gonna take Even, me like, what, yeah. five years to finish that series? Probably, <laughs> probably. If, and they're still yes. making them. And they're yeah. redubbing or, yeah. um, One Piece as we speak um, right now. Right. So we might That's see right. uh, Mihawk again in uh, future episodes. You know, I don't, I don't know. I hope so. I don't know. I don't know. According to the, mo I don't know enough about the manga to know, or the Japanese series to know if he's coming back again or when, or what the what the deal is. I heard in the manga he comes back, but uh, yeah, or he might, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yet to be determined. I hope he does. I, I love. He's my favorite character. Yeah. It. We got one question on our unlocked stream. Um, Noel J. She said, uh, "Random question: How many languages can you speak?" Oh, one English. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> okay, now I can do a French accent. I took French in high school and forgot it. I took it again in college and forgot it. Unless you do it every day and you do it regularly, you're going to forget it. You know, any language Michael is the same. Tatum, you do a Unless very you, good but there's no reason to practice <laughs> practice speaking French in Houston. My parents are pretty fluent because they go to Paris every year and mm -hmm. la di da. So I can do a French accent, but I cannot. That is the way you talk. That's the way you speak. But I don't know. I know a few phrases. I, if I go to Paris, I can say bonjour. Où est the toilette? Where's the bathroom? <clears throat> um, excuse me, or the other phrase I know is, let's see, uh, pouvez-vous parler plus doucement, s'il vous plaît, parce que je n'ai pas compris exactement ce que vous avez wow. dit, which means, Woo! could you speak a little slower, please? <laughs> I, I know one phrase, and I only know it from Dexter's that laboratory. It's omelette du fromage. <laughs> uh, omelette, omelette yes. du fromage, cheese <laughs> omelette. <laughs> <laughs> And I can do, and I can do. Uh, I, like, I like doing a British accent, and I like, I like talking like that a lot. That's really fun. Um, a Scottish accent, every now and then, is really, really cool. It's really cool. Really <laughs> Get in my belly. <laughs> and uh, what else? Gosh, uh, I've done a German accent. I think a long time ago, I did a Russian accent for different. So accents, great. Uh, but speaking languages, no. I'm afraid I don't know any. Any. I'm not fluent in any language except English. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sorry. sure we all are. Yeah, you know, I, I've, you I know, know a some, little bit some of French will we'll surprise you. A little you. bit of Spanish. I, yeah, a little bit of Spanish and French for me. Um, yeah, but um, not a lot. I only know maybe a few words in Japanese, like Ohio, Konnichiwa, mm -hmm. um, Onigashimasu. We live in Ohio. Come on. I know. Cool. <laughs> and of course, and everybody, everybody knows Nani. Baka! Idiot. <laughs> Everyone knows that one too. That's right. Everybody knows. Oh, oh. You know, yeah. <laughs> the dramatic three, pause. It's, it's three syllables. It's not just. Well, I've heard them all. I've heard them all ways. One syllable when it's like. Oh. Then there. Oh. So that's three. That's like two in and one out. Oh, <laughs> it's like this weird way. To... Uh. Gasping in anime. Yeah. yeah. The gasps are so, so. intense. <laughs> So when we were at NecoCon, um, when I was at NecoCon at the beginning of the month, we did a real food wars competition where stu it's probably the reason I got invited to the con is because they heard about Chef Chappelle and food wars. And they, they every year they did this last year, a couple of years before they have real students from the Culinary Institute of Virginia to come on stage, cook real food uh, for judges. And so they had me and, and two other voice actors judge the competition. Mm -hmm. And so while they were cooking for like 45 minutes, we were <clears throat> one of the, we had to kill time. So one of the things I did, excuse me, one of the things I did was uh, take the microphone and go down to the front of the stage and say, who can come up and do the best French accent? And so I had a lot of different takers come up to uh, to the front of the stage and give me their best phrases. It, uh, so that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. English only. English only for me. Fluency. Um. Out of all the characters you've played, which one was your favorite? Yes. Probably Mihawk. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Saw that one coming from a mile away. <laughs> he's just he's just such a he's such a cool dude. Uh, but another one I really liked uh, playing was uh, Yutaka Takanuchi in Cromartie High School. He was he's a bald headed, big school bully, and he talks like this. His voice is very down like that. 
And that was a tough session for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was it was tough on my voice. But number two, it's so funny. It's such a funny show that I love playing him because he was such good comic relief. He's a school bully, but he's really embarrassed about the fact that he gets car sick real easily. <laughs> and, and he gets motion sickness. So whenever they're you know, in a car ready to go fight the other high school, he's getting sick in the back seat and he doesn't want anybody to make fun of him. So we were recording this uh, session with a director named Stephen Foster, who's hilarious. And we were having so much fun and we were laughing so hard that we couldn't finish the session and we had to reschedule a second <laughs> session for me to come in because we couldn't stop laughing. And so while we're on an episode, the first episode, well, first or second episode where he's introduced, it's episode like three or four, he's on the back of a bus and he's really worried about this upcoming windy road. And so you see the side of my face and the side of his face like, I can't, I can't get sick. No. And he, and he kind of you know, put his face together. And I did that in the studio. And Stephen Foster started laughing so hard. I was like, dude, stop. <laughs> and, I, and I tried to make myself think of things that would stop me laughing. So I just kind of went, okay, dead puppies, ugly nuns, whatever <laughs> I, could, I could think. Dead puppies, ugly and nuns? He, I know that's so bad. I know it's so bad. I'm sorry. But he, then he laughed even harder. And he said, do that, say that. And I went, what? And he said, yeah, say that as the character. So I said, I can't, I can't make myself. Now, why this guy would say something like that to make himself not be sick doesn't make any sense. I was doing it to make myself stop laughing. He's saying it, that would make him even sicker because those are, those are horrible things. So he said, well, dead puppies are. So he said, um, if you watch the episode, he took that phrase and he sped it up. So if you watch the episode somewhere streaming, you will see my character and you will hear, I can't, Wait, that's that's the winder road, is it? I'm gonna be sick. And you hear, dead puppies knocking nuts. It's sped up really, really fast, and it's on the. He left it on the soundtrack. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like uh, Todd's character not to from Fairy Tale when he gets motion sick, but he doesn't think of anything. He just lays there like passed out. You're like, oh, make it stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was another fun character that was. Uh, I had to tell that story because it's funny, but it's it's. Uh, that's another character I really had the most fun playing in the studio. And Mihawk, just because he's so he cool. He's cool. Yeah, I love him. He's awesome. Have you guys seen Stampede yet? No, no, we no. didn't get a chance to. The premiere was in Los Angeles, but again, travel and money. Yeah. You know, Work. it's been, Work. it was playing, yes. it was playing, <laughs> yeah, it Work. was playing in Texas for. It was playing in Texas for like a few days in late October, but I didn't get to go see it. But if you blink, you're going to miss me. Every character's in this thing, but I've got like two lines. I show up, I'm suddenly on a beach, and I go, that's all I have to do. Bye. And I'm, wow. I'm out. Man. Like, your like Mihawk just had a cameo in the movie. You go like, okay, two seconds, I'm gone. Bye. That's it. He's got things to do. He's got to go be cool somewhere. Of course. You know. Yeah, you know. What else can we oh, talk about? Well what pleases a director the most? What please? Well, you'd have to ask the director. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, and I, again, I would go back to just, you know, knowing how to be a pro in the booth, knowing how to, you know, you're on a time crunch and they've got a lot of people to see and a lot of things to do. And, and just, it's like any other job, show up and don't waste time and, 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 and just be, yeah, be on your game. Yeah. Yeah. Candy. yeah. <laughs> Candy, they like candy, they restaurant, like cookies. Restaurant coupons. Brownies, yeah, yeah. I, that's a good idea. Yeah. Depends on what they like. Okay. Gift cards. Oh, everyone loves gift cards. <laughs> yeah, gift cards to some lunch joints yeah, around the area so they can go. Absolutely, yeah, Sonic, yeah, you bet. <laughs> Give me dogs. Sonic's the best. I love mm -hmm. their BLTs. The, actually, the guys, a lot of the guys at Sentai have made a point of going to get like, uh, gosh, they go to faux places and, uh, they get pho, they get, um, like Vietnamese restaurants and Asian food and stuff like that. They really like to check out the restaurants in the area that, uh, that serve, uh, serve the foreign dishes. There's a place, there's a restaurant around here that it does uh, Mongolian barbecue. There's like several restaurants. Oh. Um, Love it. Hachi, that's um, a Japanese type steakhouse where they cook the food right in front of you. You're sitting around the grill and then someone's grilling it in front oh, of yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, Mongolian barbecue, yeah, like that's another one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
and they're mm -hmm. very loud when they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Because they want everyone to hear them in the restaurant while they're clanging the knives and everything. And then they hit the gong behind yeah. them. Bong. <laughs> it's a small gong. It's not even a giant it one. It sounds like a big one when they hit it. But it's a small gong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're comedians. They got to be performers, oh, too. Yeah. You know, they got to entertain you. I'm surprised none that's of a, them have a... ever even spilled anything. You know, like when they toss food up into their hat. I'm thinking, like, have they not dropped that before? And then it Probably. ends up on their face. They probably have. Yeah, right. It's called practice. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun to watch. Like pizza joints, like when the dough hits you in the <laughs> face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Classic <laughs> movie scenario. The pizza go like, oh, something. I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, question for both of you, All if right. you don't mind. How how did Apocalypse Otaku start? How long ago did it start? Like, what's what's the story here? What's, Actually, um, it started with me. Um, mm -hmm. it started actually a year ago. Yeah, a year exactly ago. Exactly a year on ago. On this month, we just don't know what day we started. It's well, a... it was, okay. um, I think a week ago. Because so a week ago? Okay. This would have been the week I would have been sick, and then we had Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh. So. Started okay. last year, um, in 2018, and we kept it going ever since. Yeah. We used to. It used to be a three-person operation, but then one guy winged out. Then we brought another guy in, and then he stayed maybe for about oh a God. couple he, episodes. He was we hilarious. loved him. He, he was, was funny. Hilarious. But then he had other okay. stuff to do, so then it's just been me and Char since, uh, since you know, the long run, and we've kept it going. Um, we're reaching out to um, your fellow voice actors in the community. Um, yeah, Todd, we, Crispin Freeman, Johnny Bosch. We're reaching out to you guys like crazy. Uh, Lucy Christian. Lucy Christian, Great. yeah. Um, Travis Willingham. We would love to have Travis. <laughs> we would like to talk to them. <laughs> The the only messages me back. Yeah, the <laughs> I would say the only person that we actually talked to like um, on camera was Todd when he did an unlocked autograph session last month. Yeah. Um, oh, we yeah, talked cool. to okay. him. We got our autographs from him. Um, we're still I'm still waiting for a response from him to see when he's gonna be up here. We we're looking at his con schedules and everything. Um, mostly but I am. He told us when he's in them dark parts, so that means when he's in Ohio borders, he's gonna come here. Well, we don't know when that will be. <laughs> I might hmm. have to hunt that man down and drag him here. She's a little bit of a fan. <laughs> a little bit. You're a Vic you're a total Vic Mignana Mahalik. Oh, you're just a guy. Not anyway, as bad as you. <laughs> we have this man sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay. Hey, yeah. He's, He's watching there. two He's women just... squirrel over voice actor men. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> going, uh, Wait a did I go? <laughs> uh, what about me? Yeah. Th <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what Apocalypse Otaku is. Just two nerd girls just yeah, just talking. Yeah. The channel. It's your it's your gig. It's your channel. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Plus, we we don't just talk about anime. Uh, we talk about you know EMCU. Um, mm -hmm. was, Have you heard of a uh, show called The Masked Singer? Ah! Yes, it's on network. Yes, <laughs> it's on network. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I, I saw a commercial for it the other night, but I've never oh, seen it. Dude, good. you, you have... need to watch it. The, next week, we'll <laughs> okay. do the finale. At least watch that or record it. It's on okay. Fox every Wednesday night at eight, but I believe for you it'd be seven. Okay, cool. But yeah. these these uh these are celebrities dressed up in elaborate costumes. They give nothing mm. away. They have to act um not like themselves. The only way that you can figure out who they are is by their voice. And the person that got kicked off last night, I mean you could tell, tell you could tell just by her singing who it was, and it was Miss Patty uh, LaBelle. Okay. Patty LaBelle was the flower. Oh yeah. wow, she's a, she's a good singer uh, right here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think all the episodes are on Hulu, from what I've seen, um, from the oh, first season that and then the second and season. YouTube. Yeah. All right, all right. It is worth the watch, cool. John. You will not regret that decision. 
All right, Masked Slinger, check. I've been binging a lot of stuff lately. I binge one show, and then I binge another one, and then I get, you know, I, I do one show at a time. I just did uh, Fleabag on Amazon and uh, Jack Ryan. I did some Amazon shows. I did Succession on HBO. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. But cause I, And see, and I'm a video editor, so part of what I like to do is watch and see how a show is mm -hmm. cut, see, see how well I think they edit the show and how well they execute it, not just the acting, but... Because you know, the more things you inv are involved in, the more you're interested in in those elements of of, uh, of stage work and film and TV and stuff like that. So it's always fun to watch, see what other people are up to, and see how well you do it. There's some shows I can't watch um, on Netflix or some movies that have come out recently because of the way they're edited. Mm -hmm. And I do a video editing uh, panel when I go to conventions. I bring my laptop and I show... Uh, I bring my software and I, I do a little class on, you know, basics and do's and don'ts, some little tr tips and tricks, shortcuts, do's and don'ts for like an hour to an hour and a half. And what, that's one of the things I talk about is that there is this, uh, the way to edit something for a dramatic purpose versus doing a music video or something like that. And music videos are done for a certain, the, the whole point, point, part of the point of music videos is to call attention to the editing. Look how cool this is. Look how, look how sharp it is. Look how much I've crammed into one minute or whatever, you know, for the impact of it. And a lot of drama today is cut like a music video. So if it's just two people talking, the point is to listen to the conversation. You don't want to look at the editing. You want to, you don't want to notice the editing. You want to be involved in the conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm, I'm film school, so I'm old school like that. And that's the whole point. That's what we were taught. And the conversations are cut like that, all like, so fast, back and forth for no reason. It's just hey, we got to edit fast because this is something people because we're going to lose people's attention or something. If you're that quick in my mind. You don't want to stop. You don't want to watch a show and go, "Hey, I enjoyed that editing." You want to get wrapped up in the conversation and the drama, right? That's that's my perspective. So a lot of stuff's cut way too quick uh, these days. I'm an editor and I can't keep up with some of the editing that I see on TV. I'm kind of going, "I'm I'm lost. You're losing me. The camera's jumping all over the place." And stop. I want to focus on yeah. what's going on. A lot of jump shots. Yeah. What kind of. Uh... Editing software do you use? Right. That's what I was going to ask. You read uh, my mind. Yeah. I use Adobe ah, Premiere. That's yes, what we were that, taught on. Yeah. <laughs> you got that's, scared for that, a minute. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, wait. Uh-oh. We, we scared that's what him. we were taught on. Yeah. Great. Oh, that's great. That's perfect. Because, okay, I edited. I started editing um, when I was at film school, and so Avid was the only thing that existed. Mm. And Avid was the old system that everybody had. And then in the in late 90s, early whatever, you know, um, before the internet. <laughs> before the, uh, the internet, I had to use it on an old typewriter. <laughs> That's not me. That's right. <laughs> the, uh, let's see. The um, Avid was the only thing. So everybody learned how to edit on an Avid. And there were some old, there were some other systems that were competing, but nobody knew about them. So nobody wanted to work on them. So... If you were an editor and you wanted to get a job, and I wanted to, uh, to get a job, you needed to learn Avid. So I learned Avid as an intern, and then uh, Final Cut Pro came out, and Final Cut Pro was awesome. It was a really cheap uh, alternative to Avid. And then, you know, there's a big controversy about this, but when Apple upgraded and made a major switch to Final Cut to version 10, they changed a lot of stuff, and it was a whole new learning curve, and they got rid of some of the Pro features. And it ticked a lot of pro editors off. So a lot of editors went to Premiere. And I was one of the, my clients wanted to stick with Premiere. So I had to learn Premiere. And so that's what I've been using for the last, gosh, eight years. And uh, I love it. It's great. The great thing about Adobe products, though, that if you're using Premiere, is that if you get Creative Cloud membership, if you're a student, you can get a lot of discount for it. And it's a tax write off if you're a tax write off, you're an editor. So, but you get Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, yep. Premiere, all of the Adobe products in one package, and they keep them updated. And they've been they've been the monster company for decades. So they really know how to support people and update their products. And all the products speak to each other. So if I've got a Photoshop file in Premiere and I've done something to it, I can make a change on it 
it'll open Photoshop and make the change and it'll be there when I get back to Premiere. They'll round trip talk to each other. They're so, they're such good products. And so, you know, I always, uh, they don't, they don't pay me. I'm not a spokesman, uh, they're, they're but I push them. They're either. not paying us either. Yeah. They're awesome. All right, yeah. I got a, let's say it's like one to two questions. Um, the first one is, um, oh. are there any animes that are out right now that you wish you were a part of? Ooh. You know, I hear my, my Hero Academia is really cool. It is. And, uh, and a lot of my friends who are voice actors are, have either been in it for a while or they just now started working on it. So I'm like, yeah, I hope I get to work on <laughs> my hero. So yeah. that'd be that'd be really that'd be really fun. I think I'd like to take part in that because that seems like a really fun, popular show. And I think, you know, that'd be fun to work on. And um, my second question is, is that. Um, OK, which voice actor did you have the most fun recording with on any of the anime shows that you've worked on? Oh, gee. Well, you know, that's a weird question because we never work together. We always work alone in the studio whenever we record anime. You go in one at a time. Um, you never work with another actor. Uh, I don't think I've ever worked with another actor in the studio. That's usually not how it's, they record their stuff, and then you either you go in, you record your lines either with just the Japanese soundtrack. Some if depending on when you go in, some of the other actors have been in there, and you hear some of the English. If they've done their their part, maybe not. Sometimes it's all the English. It just depends on when they scheduled you. If you get scheduled late in the game, you hear all the other English voices and you play off of that. If you're first in line, no one's recorded yet and you're only listening to the Japanese of the other characters. Get, does yeah, that make yeah. sense? That makes perfect sense. The only time I've been in a studio on an anime project with other actors is when we've recorded the commentary on a DVD. <laughs> so I recorded, I recorded a commentary with Greg Ayers a long time ago for a show called, oh gosh, Akihabara, um, which was a very well, I don't think it was a very well-known show. Um, yeah, Joe Grisoff yeah, yeah. directed it for ADB. Yeah, and so we recorded a, a commentary for that. I recorded a commentary for... Oh, yeah. Me and Spike Spencer went into a studio one time and recorded with Matt Greenfield for the DVD edition of Bubblegum Crisis 2040. Ooh. So we added commentary to that. So if you buy the DVDs, you get commentary that you don't have on the VHS. Another reason to lose your VHS tapes. And let's see. I think that's about it. Oh, oh wait, no, wait, wait, wait. We recorded with a group of people one time. Me, John Swayze, and a bunch of other guys went into a studio. It was like four of us around a microphone, and we recorded some parody stuff, some like mystery science theater type uh, jokes to some of the stuff, and they wanted to make it an Easter egg on the DVD, like an additional thing. I forgot the show, but it never got on the DVD because I don't think they let them do it. They said, no, you can't. We're not going <laughs> to go for that. Shut down. But just, yeah, and they, were, they were really funny, too. I mean, they were really – we deliberately did joke takes on the on the lines we kind as of a like session. We did with Full Metal Al Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, yeah, the blooper reels. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, blooper reels, I think – you know, I'm not there sure was, if th there this happened. some of them that were intentional. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them, some of them, you know, that, that's really weird too. That's, it's very hard to tell where that comes from because everybody in the studio, whenever you get into the studio, you're always in between takes and you're always kind of making jokes with the director or you're cutting up or you're letting off steam or you're kind of taking a break and you, you tell a joke and then they record it and they say, Ooh, put the joke and see if it matches the lip flaps. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then they'll play that for the next actor who comes in sometimes like I, I did a Udawari Ramono a long time ago. I played Hakuro, and Hakuro is the guy with the mask uh, who gets discovered. It used to be it started as a game, and then it became an anime or a manga. I forgot There's the the so process, but those. yeah, so many different yeah, processes. So, either it's so, a manga, I game, know. So, an anime. Yeah. So, so I walked in the studio and I had to record uh, a, a scene. I think it was with Chris Patton was the other voice actor, but he hadn't come in yet. And so his character is against a tree like this, you know, with his just arms like right up there. And my character very stoically had to say something to him. 
and talk about philosophy and life or some something really deep. And then we re-recorded it for when Chris was going to come in later. <laughs> and instead, I, I, I said, I said, he's sitting there like this. And I go, dude, have you showered today? Because you are ripe, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And they, and they said, and I wasn't there. I had to leave. But I, when Chris came in later, I think they played in that line. And they don't tell you. They just go, OK, here's your next line. And that would have been that. He would have gone, er? You know, like, what? Er? <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, there, there's times, there's certainly times when the directors, uh, you know, have a little bit of fun with uh, whatever you whatever you happen to, you know, say in the studio one day, just kind of in between takes for fun. That's just, you no, know, they're playing around. And I so some of those blooper reels, I guess, get saved. And so they put them, I, I think I know what you're talking about, because Mike McFarland, uh, I think gave an intro to a blooper reel for yeah. Full Metal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think you're talking about that one. So they just said, "Here are some here are some outtakes from you know whatever." And those outtakes, they don't bring you. I don't think they bring you in. Hey, let's do a bunch of outtakes. They they either save them in the studio for when they happened, and they have the files because um, the mic was on. Uh, I, I don't know how they do it exactly. Yeah, because it's different every time. Uh, they were all standing. Around, I think they were all standing around Alphonse, and it was like, and they were all going, hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, some of the outtakes from, yeah, Full Metal, they either messed up a sure. line, and then I think when they save those files, they'll just put them on the DVDs when they release them and go, like, here are the outtakes from these, <laughs> yeah, from yeah. this show right here. And then you can just launch it and go, like, oh my gosh, they actually messed up, so they're not perfect. <gasps> <laughs> oh yeah, no, we we yeah, we totally mess up a lot. That's very very true. Like sometimes, God, what was the best? What was the best mess up I ever did? I mean, I'm, well, I can't really remember the, the the best ones, but there are some where, like like the Cromartie High School thing I told you about that made it onto the DVD. I mean, I didn't intend for that dead to happen, dead but dead oh, puppies. One, one time. <laughs> yeah, one time, uh, Stephen Foster, I showed up. I had to be at work at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, at my video editing job, I, when I was full time and at my, the first studio I worked at and there, uh, I had to go in at seven 30 to record until eight 45, run over to work or be there at night or whatever. And so it's really early in the morning and Stephen Foster's like, mm -hmm, we're all just kind of tired. And, and I have to do sorcerer hunters, right? Oh, this is on my that. demo. <laughs> and this guy, this guy stands up. I think you can look at it on my demo reel. It's on my website. And it's, it's, uh, um, and it was, on, it was out on VHS. They never made a DVD of it, or maybe they did. They I don't did. know, but it was really old. It was not 16 by 9, all right? It was 3-4. So, and the original lines were completely different from what's on the DVD, every one of them. Uh, Stephen Foster just decided he didn't like what he heard. He just kind of said, yeah, I don't like this. Hold on. He went outside, smoked a cigarette, took a break, rewrote the character. So at first I walked in and I was like, behold, the beautiful buddy, and blah, blah, blah. I've worked out a lot, <laughs> and all these guys are working out. And, and so... Later, he comes in and he says, okay, here's what you're going to say now. And now I became a totally different character, different accent, like making fun of Hans and Franz on, on, uh, on, and Schwarzenegger on uh, SNL. <laughs> and I was, you know, going, you look like a bunch of little girls. You should be able to crack one nuts with your butt cheeks. <laughs> and they oh, put that on. Great. So that so it was almost like an outtake, but it was even more elaborate because he said, you know what? I want the character to be completely different. I think we're going to do that. And I guess nobody ever complained because funny. it was. Who would complain if it's yeah. funny? Have the DVD at home. No, no, of course not. That, yeah, that's fun. And Ghost Stories is a great example of of uh, how they would deliberately dub something and make a joke on the animation. Um, that's really fun to watch. There was another there was another uh, show called Shinobi that was a live action. Um, this is hard to do because. It, it was shot live action. It's this four DVD series called Shinobi. And they, they recorded it at ADV. And let me see if I've got the DVD. Hold on a second. I'm going to get up, see if I can find it. He probably does in do, the, do, do. Uh, the down arrangement. The of, yeah, down on the bottom row towards the left. <laughs> well, this this is one of the wow. um, Shinobi. It's live action, okay? It's better, got, better than uh, Dragon Ball you know, a who's, a who's who. Who's who of ADV voice actors in it, and um, 
So it was a four DVD series, and one, and and so if you buy the DVD series, if you can get it, it's it's only going to be on the DVDs. It's not going to be streaming or anything. There's commentary tracks, but they're not commentary tracks. What we did was in DVD one, we did the whole thing for real, and recording lip flaps for live action is a lot tougher than recording lip flaps for anime because it's not just that, 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 that. I mean, it's, it's the way your lips are shaped around consonants and different vowels mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, that's tougher to match. So you're in the studio for a little bit longer. It's more difficult. And it was supposed to be taken really seriously and really dramatic, but it was, there was a little bit of a humorous quality to it because it was a little bit low budget. And, um, so for the commentary track on disc one, we recorded the literal Japanese translation, the literal translation of the Japanese language, wow. which sounds very, very different from how you need to kind of, you know what I mean? How you need to shape it and rewrite it for the way that American idioms and the way that different things are said and, and understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds really weird. It sounds it sounded really strange. It's like here's an ex interesting experiment. Then for DVD number two, they decided to do something different. Let's start. We we got totally mystery science theater with it. We decided to make jokes the whole way. So the entire disc of DVD two with all of its episodes is just the same characters, the same actors making joke lines through the entire thing. So that was really funny. Then on disc three, it was everybody did different accents or something. So my character had a Scottish accent through the entire thing. I mean, it was, you know, Kyle Jones directed a couple of them and John Swayze directed one of them, but it got worse and worse and sillier and sillier by disc. I believe it. <laughs> it's like, it's like nothing by the time you watch the fourth disc, it's so far removed that it's, just, it's nothing but four discs of joke, joke time in the studio. <laughs> matching the lip flaps to what's to a real time Japanese movie or series. Wow. So it's really, yeah, that was, that was really fun. That's probably the most fun I've had in a studio. Let's call it, let's call that. Yeah. Shinobi. Shinobi okay. That takes the prize. Do you have a favorite character line from any of the enemies you've done? Favorite character line. Whew. Gosh. Oh man. I should have prepared this. I should have thought about that before. We're hitting you with casual con know. questions that you would probably hear at a convention. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, huh. Favorite character line. I got to think about that one. Golly. Do, 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 do. I know. I'm, uh, I know. Gosh, I'll have to think about it. Let me, you know what? If I think, once I think of it, I will, uh, I'll talk about it on Unlocked, or I'll uh, I'll send you a video of it or something. I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, see if I can find the clip, and we'll uh, we'll chat about it. It might probably something Mihawk said. You know, I don't know. Um, when we were when we re-recorded uh, East Blue, we redid the East Blue Adventures for a new DVD of of One Piece, and when they first see Mihawk ever. He's, they're shooting bullets at him, and he's simply holding out his sword. He's reading a book or something. He's just holding out his sword, and you know, and they go ping, ping, ping off his off his uh, a sword. He just goes, huh? just just wasting time, like that. That was kind of fun, um, because he was being such a cool dude. <laughs> I'm failing. I am failing this question. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, gosh. <sighs> Next one. <laughs> Pass. All right. Um, I'll find so it. I'll find it. If I'll... you eventually come to Ohio, we, we're reaching out to our local cons here, Ohio Con, Matsuri Con here in Ohio, and also um, Colossal Con. Great. Um, Great. If you get an invite from either of those three cons that are here in Ohio, can we be on your panel with you? Oh, you just come to the panel? Either come to the panel or be there with you and answer questions because... It would actually be a huge experience, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's really up to the. That's really probably just up to the con uh, themselves. If you want to broach that with them, you you could just ask them. I'm happy to. I mean, if you want to have an apocalypse otaku panel, and they say, "Hey, we want to do a panel there. We want to interview some voice actors or make that part of the deal." Yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, but it's not. A, it's not up to me to say, "Hey, I'm gonna bring." So I'm gonna bring yeah, like. I'm gonna bring so and so with me, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, right. 
but I'm happy to, I mean, I'm happy to take, I love taking part in, in different panels instead of just doing a one-on-one -on -one yeah. mm -hmm. where it's all you. I like taking part in group panels and yeah, bring it. I mean, if, 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 uh, if there's ever a, um, if there's ever a type of panel where you've arranged it to where you, you're going to interview some voice actors live at a panel, yeah, sure, absolutely. We'll have to, well, that there's an idea that you just threw at us, and we'll have to think about that. We just got to figure out which con we're yeah. going to do it at. Uh -huh. so, so are any of these cons that you mentioned in January? Ohio con is in January. Okay. It's either January okay. or February. I'm, book I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm booked all through. I'm booked all through January from New Year's Eve up to February, the first weekend in February. So probably one of those I couldn't make it, even if they even if they asked. But the others probably yeah, yes. Con is in so, yeah, just, June, and then Matsuri Con here in Ohio is, I believe, in March. I'm gonna have to go back to okay. the annals that is the internet yeah. to find out. Just pretty, <laughs> pretty much every, pretty much anything but January okay. is good. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah, but I'll be in, I'll be at OzCon. Well, I'm doing Anime Dallas mm -hmm. next weekend. Um, and then I'm going to be at OzCon in April, April 20th to the 22nd, I think are the dates. And I think that's all we've got on the books for, for sure right now. There might be some other ones, but I'm waiting to hear back. So can't talk about anything that I'm, that I'm trying to work out at the moment until they make it official. That's kind of, you know, keeping things copacetic, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm all about, and like I've said to people before, I've said this on unlocked as well. Uh, being a stage actor, if you, if you're doing plays, you're always either in rehearsal or you're doing a show on the weekends. So I used to be with a company that did musicals, five or six musicals a year. And we were always booked every weekend. You could never get out of town. You could never travel unless it was a very special circumstance. And so I never did cons for years. And so I'm, it's, I'm kind of new to the scene, actually. Um, I did a few in 2017. Then I had did a lot of theater in 2018. And so now I'm back at it now. And so I'm, I'm but I'm really enjoying it. I, re I really love the travel. And I like doing the panels and the group panels. And the, it's, it's really fun to meet a lot of the fans. And what I'm finding when I go to these cons is that a lot of people, and this is on me because I don't, you know, I wasn't really big on marketing um, and going, uh, but they, they'll they meet me and they'll say, I didn't know you did these characters. I didn't know you played, I knew you played these guys, but I didn't know you played this other, this, that, and the other. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's revving that part of it up, you know, and getting, getting your name out there and just getting, letting people know what you do. So that's, that's all kind of a newer, uh, situation for me. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, I'm really liking the travel and I love meeting the fans. It's really fun. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to run some titles by you real quick. Other titles okay. that I have besides <laughs> what I, do have Sorcerer, I do have Sorcerer Hunters on DVD at home. Awesome. Um, according to the internet movie database, it's not even on there. It's not? No. What? It's not. Yeah, you know, depending on where you look, I'm either some of the, some behind the voice actors titles are not there, some IMDb may, might not be there. But uh Evangelion. Yeah. Oh I yeah. got that one. <laughs> well, the remake, the remake of Evangelion. I have the silver box set. The silver, silver box, box set is the one. Yes, I've got some I've done some voices on that, yeah. Uh like you said Nadesco and plus yep. the movie uh, and Bubblegum mm -hmm. oh, Prices, yeah. Tokyo 2040, yeah. Orphan. Mm -hmm. Did some stuff on Orphan. Yeah, I used to have an Orphan VHS up there on the shelf. And yes, I did. I can't remember. You know what? I think I was a, some weird creature and I responded to the name Orphan and I went, Orphan, like I was thinking about him. <laughs> oh, that was Orphan, yeah. Some some creepy ghost or something, some specter I was playing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I I think I used to have it on VHS, but then I switched it to DVD. DVD. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shadow Skill. AG. Gosh, man, we're going way back. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when we've Shadow done a voice actor interview. She's dug a, so much info. On John, and, and I, then is you yeah, and you but, too on all of the shows that you have done that you probably don't even remember. 
there's a couple. I'm, I'm telling you, there's some that w I'll be at a con or I'll be at a panel and somebody go, hey, so when you did that show, and I went, what? what? I did what? <laughs> huh? this, show, I mean, uh -huh. this goes to show how many actual shows that you guys do you know, possibly in a week. It's easy. It's easy sometimes to forget. Oh, I'm sorry. It's easy fine. sometimes. <laughs> no, that was me. I got a ding. Um, it's easy sometimes to forget uh, that you've done a title maybe from 8, 10, 12 years ago. I mean, I'm doing this for 20 years. And so because, because again, when you get the call, you don't know the show. And sometimes it's just in the middle of the day on a Tuesday. And they just say, hey, can you come in for a couple hours? We want to do Shadow Skill or whatever. And you go, oh, what's this called? Shadow? Okay. And then you just get into the character. You're done in a couple hours. You go home. You forget about it. Maybe you get a DVD in the mail uh, when they send it to you. The next time you show, here's your status. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that show. <laughs> and, it's, you, and it's not that you don't care about the work. It's not that you're not serious about it. It's not that the actor is being all, oh, yes, that work that I did. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, being all aloof and everything. Um, it's because literally sometimes you have, have gotten in and out of the studio so quickly and years have passed since you did it that you don't remember everything that you did. Um, let's see. Raz Fawn. Oh, yeah. Uh, Full Metal Panic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Really Peacemaker. I did a lot of different characters in Full Metal Panic. I did some different guys in Full Metal Panic. I did a few different characters. Uh, also got uh, Peacemaker. Yes. That was a good show. Yep. That was a fun show. I played a really Lucy bad Christian guy started. on that show. Yeah, I played a I played a really uh, deep voiced guy on that. Yeah, he was uh, a pyromaniac. Pyromaniac, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember one of my lines was "Patience, Suzu. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bide our time slowly, smoking them out. You know, something yeah. like that. Yeah, he said. <laughs> we're gonna get the bad guys. Trust yep. me. Uh, Dn Angel. You had, you did yes. two characters on that one. I remember. I played. I think I was Dark's father, or was I Crad's father? Uh, Crad's father. Crad's he father. Did. Yes. And you first. also played the conductor. Da, 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 da. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I remember. Okay. <laughs> Back I got that one. You one. would. <laughs> uh, go Danner. Yes. Oh, speaking of Go Danner, didn't we um put him in one of our um. I'm trying to think. We put him in a. Uh, it was our Max versus Gundam battle royale yes. a while back, and Go Danner mm. didn't make the cut. No. Well, that uh, was to determine who would be next was, in our battle royale. That was when we determined. That was. It was Max ah. versus Gundams. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, I'm not ignoring you. I'm checking what that ding was. Hold on one second. Sorry. Do do do. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, the next one is tactics. Yeah, I it was called not Nagica Tactics, I think. Uh, only thing I had, the only thing it says on my DVD is Tactics. Yeah, that tactics. must be just okay. I remember that. I do not remember what I did or who I played, but I I remember the name. I remember the title, Tactics. Yes. Uh, Chrono Crusade. Oh yeah, Chrono Crusade was fun. I played a really bad villain on that one. Uh, Full Metal. They actually they actually affected my voice on that because I I. I, I was British. I was like this Alan Rickman kind of Snape villain voice, like Synchrono. It's been such a long time, you know, locked into a form such as this. You cannot break free. And they deepened it. They, they, they like affected it. it like they do the, yeah, they cranked it way down so that it had this much spookier depth to it. It was really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Full Metal Alchemist mm -hmm. and the Yes, movie. played Law. Yeah. And I played the villain on Full Metal Alchemist Conqueror of Shambhala at the beginning. His name is Huskisson. Mm -hmm. Elric defeats him at the very beginning of the movie. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Samurai Gun. Yeah, Samurai oh, Gun. Wow. All right. That, one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was only four DVDs. That's how long it was. Wow. Oh. Uh, Trinity oh. Blood. Yes, good one. Cardinal Cardinal Francesco, I think, was his name. I think so. Um, Got pretty basilisk. 
Basilisk, hold up. Uh, <laughs> back to the DVD shelf we go. <laughs> and oh, there's there's a little there's a go. That box yeah. set, though. There's a, you wouldn't yes. believe how many people on the internet do not know what that show is. I do. Wow. Okay. <laughs> He's one of my favorite characters. He was a sensei, and he was uh, helping out the lead character. Yeah. He was giving him all of his best life philosophy. And tell he was like the Yoda, and he and he was blind, but he had all of his other senses. He could tell when villains were approaching from miles off, and and all that stuff. He was way cool. I love playing Speaking him. Speaking of that, we did another battle royale involving that enemy. It was our uh, samurais versus ninjas. I bet I didn't even make oh. the cut. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's not the our internet's fault. fault. It's not our fault. Okay. Genosuke made the cut, I didn't though. Blame yes. You. I didn't Genosuke blame you. Made it. Genosuke made the cut. You're like, okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> He's not amused. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, Don't worry about it. Another one I have is Darker Than Black, Gemini of the Meteor. Yeah, Darker Than Black. That's right. And uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yay. And yep. Le Chevalier mm -hmm. de Alm. Oh, yeah, Chevalier Dion was really interesting. I played a really haughty dude in that one. He was fun. Yeah, he was fun. So that's great. Yeah, the, that's quite a list. I have a lot of <coughs> anime, but those are the ones that I've watched that you've been in. Because I Very went through cool. them, I was like, yeah, seen that? seen that? Seen that? I have that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, I, like I said, what I do now is that if I go to a con, I bring a cheat sheet. I, I went to... I went to behind the voice actors and I, I downloaded, I, I just, you know, kind of grabbed screen, grabbed the little, the little pics they have of your character. And I just created a little sheet of the more, more well-known ones. And I bring in and say, Hey, what else have you done? And I go, here, you know, <laughs> like, here let, you go. <laughs> let people, yeah. Let people, let people see it. No, totally. Let people see it because, uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to remember, but it's all there in front of you. It's like having your little IMDB list in front of you. Hey. Yeah. That, so that's yeah. A, yeah. That's a good little cheat Come sheet. Very yeah. handy. Um, Yes. Yeah, I noticed that on Funimation they did add Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as well as Black Butler. I've seen seasons one and two. I'm currently watching Book of Circus right now. I just started watching the first episode not too long ago. Yeah, and they just announced uh, Funimation now just started adding back the first two seasons on their streaming service. So you can see like a couple days ago. So now you can watch uh, Black Butler seasons one and two on Funimation. Now you didn't used to be able to do that. Yeah. I'm glad they did. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they did too. Okay, what time is it? It's uh, four thirteen on our end. Okay, three thirteen. Okay, we got a yeah, few more minutes. All right. Does anybody on Unlock have a question? So, well, Nicole left <laughs> because she had to work. <laughs> <laughs> she had just one question asking about how many languages work. does this man speak? And what's work? But you know, everybody, you know, with with us, we this is the only day out of the week that we take time to be our nerdy selves. Oh. Yeah. You got to take nerd time. <laughs> For me, that's every day. I mean, nerd time is I crucial. I actually stayed up last night binge watching Star Trek Continues and Vic, Todd, Chuck, Huber, and um, the original Scotty son do an amazing job on bringing uh, Star Trek to its former glory. And it's awesome. Wow. Cool. Very um, cool. Are there any roles that you auditioned for that? You didn't get. Uh, I auditioned to play Mr. Tonagawa, and I ended up playing a supporting role. But I, I think it was between me and maybe one other guy for the lead in Mr. Tonagawa. Mm. So he, he got was they said, hey, we're just gonna choose between you know, and so that's one role I didn't get. But I liked playing the support. That was a fun show anyway. I played one of the subordinates. Ah, uh, gosh. I, I've not auditioned for a lot of anime. It's it's almost it's almost always they'll just call you in because they decided to cast you already. They said let's get, and then there was uh, you know actually uh, a role that I'm playing right now on a show called Domestic Girlfriend, which is on High Dive. This character named Kobayashi slash Marie. It's a trans character, oh. and first one I've ever played. And she is. It's a super fun character, really cool character to play, but it wasn't originally slated for my for me. I think someone else wasn't able to make it, 
And John Swayze called me in instead and said, I think, you know, let's, let's have you play this role. So I wasn't supposed to play it originally. Mm, cool. That's all I can. But yeah, so hopefully, you know, and um, let's see what else we talk about. Oh, yeah. So one thing that's been happening lately is that uh, and hopefully this will get better is that when you do when you do a role at Funimation, you have to drive from Houston. If you don't live in Houston, you got to drive to Fort Worth and back. And that can be tough if you're doing a simul dub and you got to show up every week and stuff like that. And that I haven't had to do that yet. But um, or some some of the stuff we recorded for Mihawk lately, uh, we recorded in Houston and you're in touch with the Funimation studio and you're over something called Source Connect, which makes it fast enough to be able, uh, it's an internet connection that is hefty enough that the animation can still play live all the way from Fort Worth on a screen at a studio in Houston while you are recording the lines. Cool. Yeah, it's a little tougher to do, but you know, I think being in person is probably a little more, a little more fun. It's a little more, you know, What's the word? It's just more immediate. You've got you've got a better connection with the director in the studio because you can talk about things more. Yeah, because yeah, they have right. to, you know, watch it and then say, eh, Yeah, decide to change. Can you do that again? Yeah. But I want it this way. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. So Any questions? Uh no, I can't think of any right now. <laughs> I'm all out. I'm all, I'm all, out. Out. I'm all out of questions. I can't no. think of any more. No, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> all right. Well, fine. Well, I think that's been really great, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, inviting me onto your show and having me on. Is there anything we need to shout out or say or discuss or uh, plug? Plug Just us. <laughs> Just us. <laughs> well, folks, thank you. Thank you for watching Apocalypse Otaku and tune in in the future for more during Nerd, Nerd Hour, Hour, which happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, John. Um, we thank you for taking You're time out of your welcome. schedule. And I will be catching you next week on Tuesday on your Unlock stream, sir. Please, please do. Thank you so much. And have a great day, yeah, both of you. you. Thanks for, uh, for having me. Pleasure. Bye, John. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. And I'm going to have to cut this uh, little unlock stream short because my phone's going to die. So thanks, you guys, for tuning in the best you could. Thanks so much. So on our screen was the one and only John Gremion. Mr. Mihawk and Mr. Frenchman from Food Wars himself. John, we thank you. Um, thank you. The, our second voice actor in the bag. Now, whew, wow. Two voice actors for us within a span of a month. Holy cow. All right, now for those of you out there who have a Disney Plus account. Oh my. First off, the, you know, the first week for Disney Plus were reported as being phenomenal. But. It seems the there was, they kind of skimped on the security. Um, a lot of people were not surprised because their IT department is extremely lacking in security. On launch day very well. Mm. Now, there are rumors that usernames, passwords, and email addresses are being sold on the dark web. Uh-oh. And it's only... It's 
active for a week. <laughs> so for those of you out there, have you had any issues with your Disney Plus? If so, if so, change your password and Jeez, it sounds like a ASAP. It sounds like a rooster teeth uh, thing, you know, where people were getting like a subliminal, uh, you know, weird emails and junk. So, um, yeah, th that's that's what kind of that sounds like for Disney Plus. But come on, Disney, get your stuff together. Really, come on. But uh, apparently, they not only have. You know, security problems on there on that site because um, the Disney Plus is also linked to their other sites. What's other sites? Oh my gosh, they have so many sites. Uh, you know, like if you want to travel. And go to one oh, of the you mean Disney like you mean like uh planning like uh you know Disney travel you know mm -hmm. going their Disney cruises yep, and stuff yep, like that yep. what it's all connected <gasps> no in one big Disney mess <laughs> <laughs> Disney mess <laughs> but yeah it's uh, yeah not looking uh, good for uh, Disney right now nope no it's not oh boy. Oh, my goodness. And now we're going to talk about the Hulk. Uh-oh. Is this good Hulk news or bad Hulk news? It depends on how you want to take it. Okay. Let's hear it. Apparently, Mr. Lou Ferrigno was disappointed with Hulk in Avengers Endgame. What? And blames Mark Ruffalo and Disney. For those of you who don't know, Mr. Ferrigno was the you know, incredible Hulk in the TV series. Oh, yeah, the old retro looking yes. Hulk. The, the messed up hair <laughs> and bulging biceps. The olive green Hulk. Ah! <laughs> The really uh, down, the really downgraded Hulk, not the CGI one, the realistic one. <laughs> um, there was a five-year time jump, and during that time, Bruce Banner successfully merged his mind with the other guy's mind. Hulk. Uh, strength. Other guy's strength after an 18-month stint. In a gamma lab, creating a combination of the two, called Smart Hulk. Smart Hulk. Also called Professor Hulk in the Marvel series, Marvel comic books. Hmm. What do y'all think? Well, first off, the dude should really understand that from his time donning the green-eyed monster time moved on with hulk and they decided let's not go with the live action hulk and go for a more cgi version that could possibly be bigger so he's complaining about mark gruffalo being hulk is that what you're saying Oh, okay, well, then that's understandable. Uh, his thing is, is he's supposed to be more brutal and more savage. True, that's the Hulk's nature. But in the comic books, they made a Professor Hulk. It's no different than, you know, She-Hulk. Isn't she a lawyer? Or a doctor? Or a therapist or something? Somewhere along. We'll find out. I'll find we'll out. find out later. <laughs> we'll find out when Disney Plus puts She-Hulk on. Yeah. Oh, uh, and in Black Panther news. Woo! Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Chadwick Boseman wants nothing to do with Marvel Disney Plus series. What? On the streaming service. Hmm. 
a TV show, adding that he has other things he's excited about doing, and none of those are franchises. Like, he's got a movie coming out. It's called 21 Bridges. Yep. The trailer for that is awesome. It's a lot of explosions. <laughs> so many explosions. <sighs> Okay. Uh, All right. Where? Sorry. Eh. Drinking a lot of water because <laughs> getting over cold. Eh. Okay. Now for a bit of DC news. B- <laughs> the way you said that was funny. According to Henry Cavill, mm-hmm. he is not, I repeat, is not. Giving up his Superman role yet. Mm. He said there's a lot of storytelling yet to come. So hang on tight. It may be a bumpy ride because he has other roles he'd love to explore. Mm. And now back to Marvel. (laughs) That was your DC news for five minutes. That was your DC news for today. So we don't know who's going to be Captain Britain. Nope. Um, okay, so Chris <laughs> Evans, who we all know is Cap- Captain America. America. <laughs> Captain America was asked if he would come back and play the same character. He replied saying, it's not a hard no but it's not an eager yes either. Sounds like a hard, uh, maybe a hard or uh, undecisive, maybe? No, you're not listening. It's not a hard no, but it's not an eager yes either. Again, it's a maybe. Yeah. That's what I said. I said it was a maybe. It's a, well, there's more to it. Okay. Uh, there are other things I'm working on right now. I think Captain had a tricky act to try to stick. A tricky. A tr- you can't read your own handwriting. Sorry, I sometimes <laughs> have a hard time. A tricky landing to try to stick. And I, I had to switch words there because I don't think I wrote it right. And I think the they, the directors, Mm -hmm. did a really nice job letting him complete his journey. If you're going to revisit it, it can't be just a cash grab. It can't just be just because the audience... Um. Uh, wants to be excited. Mm-hmm. What are we revealing? What are we adding to the story? A lot of things would have to come together. When do you think they should bring back Captain America? Leave your comments below mm-hmm. on YouTube. Yes. For those of you who don't know, we are also on YouTube at Apocalypse Otaku. We are at, what, 54 subscribers right now? Uh, 53, 54. 53, 54. Give or take a few. Because the man that we just interviewed, John Gremion, has also subscribed to our YouTube channel. Yes, he did. And we thank him for that. Yes, he Um, did. Also giving us basically the two shout-outs. One that was on Unlocked on his stream on Tuesday. And then also today... So we thank you, John Gremion, for, you know, being you. (laughs) Being the awesome guy that you are. Being the awesome guy that you are. Now, those are two voice actors that have worked with ADV as well as worked with other anime companies as well. John Swayze and John Gremion. Now, if only... 
only, and God, I pray, if only we could get Vic, Todd, Chuck, Huber, Johnny Bosch, Crispin Freeman. Crispin. Crispin. I didn't say Crispin. You said Crispin. Oh, Crispin. Crispin Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Crispin Freeman. I'm that sorry. Sounded, lo- sounded like you were saying Christian. No, I said Crispin. <laughs> Crispin Freeman. Todd Will Travis Willingham. Yeah, and Travis. I already Lucy, said Todd. Lucy Christian. Steve Wendy Bloom. Lee. Steve Bloom. Steve Bloom. We are on Twitter as well at Apocalypse Otaku and Apocalypse Otak One. We would love to set up interviews with you lovely lovely people um, at your convenience at your of convenience. course it is your convenience we understand that you guys have con appearances you guys are busy maybe recording other anime shows we are not here to drag your names through the mud we are fans first critics second that is what we are here at apocalypse otaku we are fans first critics second and we we care about what you guys have to say about, you know, this, the things that you have done in the anime world. And we want to hear them as much as everybody else. Mm-hmm. We are not the bad guys. We just want to talk to you. Yep. And discuss nerd things. Because we're nerdy girls. And plus all of our otaku knots would like to have you guys on our show as well. Those are our fans. We are calling them otaku knots. <laughs> Forget astronauts. Everyone wants to be an otaku knot now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, anything else you need to cover? Because I just went completely uh, like left. Well, I've got uh, a whole bunch more. So do you want to move on? Or yeah, you... I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Moving on up. To the east side. <laughs> what? I had to bring it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned moving on. I'm thinking like, yep, I had to sing it. <laughs> well, I didn't say moving on up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who will play the villain in Thor? Thor. Otherwise known as Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm-hmm. That's the question. Well, apparently, it's not just going to be one. It's going to be two. Two villains? <gasps> two villains. One fell. Ooh. First, there will be the Enchantress. Hmm. And second is Gore, the God Butcher. God Butcher. Okay. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm God, the God Butcher. These, villain, these villains could set the tone for Phase 5. Ooh. Ooh. Phase 5. Yay. Which is it be revealed. All right. So now we're moving on. Tony Stark, otherwise known as RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. We love you. <laughs> we love you, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All seriousness we'll now. We'll be in the Black Widow movie. Yes. As archive footage in the new upcoming movie. Plus, he will be in an episode of What If? I think he's supposed to be um, changing, you know, it's kind of like what if Tony Tony Stark was, you know, this character instead of this character, Hmm. or so on and so forth. Anywho, also Marvel has added five new movie dates to the next couple of years. Sweet. And Marvel has upped the amount of movies being put out. Sweet. Uh, so that means they're in 2020, uh, 
starting uh, 2021, they're going to be putting out four movies a year. Wow. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um... Uh, 2021, 22, and 23. Uh, all through all three of those years, you can guarantee there's going to be four movies coming out, and that includes the Spider-Man movie. Oh yeah, the new, uh, the second Spideyverse movie that's supposed to be coming out in 2021. Uh, no, the one with Tom Holland. Oh, okay, that one. Spider-Man three. Uh, the five new dates are October 7th, 2022, February 17th, 2023, uh, May 5th of 23, July 28th of 23, and November 3rd of 23. Okay. Are you excited about Marvel putting out four movies a year? Let me know in the comment section below. On YouTube. <laughs> All right. And by the way, the October 7th of uh, 2022 mm -hmm. may be reserved for Deadpool 3. <gasps> and yes, again, mm. it's going to be a rated R movie. Duh. Because Deadpool is Deadpool. All right, so we're going to go away from the MCU. I'll come back to it here in a minute. But in the meantime, it's the Toonami schedule. It's Toonami time! For Saturday, November the 23rd. Uh, starting at 9 o'clock, they're hot, they're juicy, and they're always served fresh. So hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob's Burgers. <laughs> no, but for real though, I really am hungry. I didn't have anything to eat this morning. <laughs> Here, eat this. I'm not eating Iron Man. <laughs> I can't eat that. <laughs> I don't have any snacks for you. Well, I didn't buy any yet. <laughs> Yet. Have to um, <laughs> and then at 10, they're on for, uh, and by the way, Bob's Burgers is on for an hour. Uh, at 10 p.m., they're on for an hour. It's Barry's favorite show. His second favorite, or one of two favorites. It's one of two favorites. Mm -hmm. Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> geeky, geeky, geek, good, gee. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we have to. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, man. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> At 11 o'clock, we have My Hero Academia. Woo, Deco! And 11.30 is One Punch! Man. Man. <laughs> and then at midnight we have Dr. Stone. Master of Flame. Ooh. And at 12:30 we have Fire Force. Love that. 1 a.m. is Food Wars. Mm. I don't know what's going on with my DVD, my DVR, but it has not been recording demon slayer well can, can you maybe um i'm gonna force it to or could you just delete some of the old stuff that you don't need on your dvr no it records everything else that's weird it records everything else on saturday anyway <laughs> at 1 <1:30 laughs> is demon slayer <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> we went from technical problems to uh anime shows okay <laughs> uh then at 2 a.m is black clover 2.30 is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. Yay. Oh, and him and Kalifu are teamed up. Woo! And at 3 a.m. is Naruto Shippuden. 
And at 3.30 a.m. is Lupin the Third Part 5. 4 a.m. is Attack on Titan. Ooh, looks like they're wrapping up the Season 3 on Toonami. And then after that, you can take a half-hour break from watching Toonami because if you're up it's just late. going to be Super Jail and... Paul Masters! 9009. Barry's favorite show. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, they're on for a half hour. Not to be confused with Aqua Teen Hunger Force. It's just, just Aqua, Aqua Teen. Teen. You got French Rot. I can't remember. I can't remember that. Master Shake. Master Shake. And I, but I can't remember the Fry Guy's name. I I don't I haven't seen and then there's a meat wad yeah we'll just say Matt oh Master Fries oh it's not Master no. Fries I don't know his name all I know is that he's just a thing of French fries with a beard beard fry there it, he's <laughs> talking box of French fries mm -hmm. and a meatball and a shake and then at five thirty oh boobies oh I like the name of the show <laughs> I like the name of the <laughs> oh, we no. can't say it. We can't say it, but it's funny. <sighs> it's so funny though. Yeah, we can say it. Those beaches tried to cheat me. Those weeches tried to cheat. <laughs> tried to cheat me. You could have said beaches. Beaches. <laughs> Those beaches tried to cheat me. Mm-hmm. Ah. That's so totally what it says. Yep. Well, somewhat, but either way, we we try to dumb it down the best we could. <gasps> Not dumb it down, clean it up a little bit. <laughs> clean it up a little. Okay, now we are moving <sighs> on to manga readings. And, as I would say, torture time, time for the torture. It's torture time. We had tsunami time, now torture time. Um... This is from... Sit back and enjoy the torture. Yep, this is from otakucalendar.com. Heh, it's funny, it's appropriate because we're otaku. And there's, an ot there's a calendar for us. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start off with this past Tuesday, where Vic Mignogna streamed and he had the ultimate joy of his life, where one of the streamer's friends is going to name her baby boy after him. Oh. How adorable. And he was so speechless when he heard that. <laughs> and he was about to cry. I'm thinking, oh, my God, Vic, don't you dare cry. <laughs> it was an emotional Gosh, moment for it him. Sounded like his mom. Don't you dare cry. <laughs> but it was an emotional moment for him. Or, and or it was that an famous honor. line in uh, A League of Their Own. There's no you're crying in baseball. Are you crying? <laughs> There's no, no crying. crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> Tom Hanks. Awesome. I think Very he, great actor. I He's also funny. And the thing is, I, I saw this on my Facebook feed saying that Tom Hanks is actually related to Mr. Rogers. Huh. Hey, no idea. No wonder. No wonder he's playing Mr. Rogers. I know. How weird. Okay, b back to what we were saying. We went from uh, Tom Hanks, uh, the you know, major league, and then all that other. Stuff. Wait, no, not major uh, league. That was a league all, all their own. I know. I put on my jacket earlier. It's cold in here. Okay. Sorry, y'all. We were cold. <laughs> I look ice, but I'm freezing. Mm -hmm. We have to be comfortable. Okay. <sighs> um, let's see. So we're gonna so start. You need to put a curtain up in here. I know. And a yeah. heater. True. Okay, so we're gonna start mm. with this past Tuesday. As I said, Vic Mignogna streams every Tuesday, folks, and he'll be streaming. So is John Gremion. And John Gremion, yeah. Also, he will be live tomorrow and unlock to do an autograph session. That was uh, me. Vic. Yes, Vic. <laughs> you didn't say that. Well, I did say Vic. I said Vic will be doing an autograph session this basically tomorrow. Okay, anyway, <laughs> the otaku calendar of <laughs> manga. Woo, all right. 
So we're going to start with, like I said, Tuesday that I've said three times. But I'm going to get on with it now. <laughs> you sure? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to start off with. You're really going to start? <laughs> okay. I'm starting right now. Dang it. <laughs> okay. Beast Stars Volume 3. Now these were all manga releases that were released in the US. Um bottom tier characters, Tamazaki Volume 2. Children of the Whales Volume 13. Oh, Children of the Whales. Great anime series. If you have Is that Netflix anything watches. like Children of the Corn? No. Okay. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> creepy at all. <laughs> it really isn't. It really isn't. Okay. Don't toy with me, Mrs. Nagatoru. Volume 1. Okay. Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest 2. Let's hope, you know, Funimation gets their stuff together and they can make more at more episodes of Fairy Tale. Cuz I want to see more Natsu and everybody. Okay. You just want to hear Todd. Who doesn't want to hear Todd? Or uh, Jeremy, or uh, I forget who else is uh, on there. Colin Klingenbeard, she's Urza. I had no idea for the longest time until I saw it. She's like, oh, she's Urza. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was way behind the eight ball. I knew she was Luffy. I didn't know she played Urza Scarlet, too. So. Keep it going. All right. Um, Gelly Panair, five. That is, a, that is a weird title. What was it again? Glenio Pinair. It's spelled G L E I P N I R. It's like right here. Wow, it is loud up there. What are they doing up there? Okay, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> How heavy are the dumbbells you lift? Volume one. One I pound. <laughs> I'm standing Jeez. on a million lives for Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. Volume one. <laughs> Adventures of the Galactic Heroes, volumes 10, Sunset. That sounds familiar. Um, let's see. Lectives slash etc. No, lective slash Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Volume one. I'm not sure how that goes. I'm just trying to pronounce it the best I can. Okay. My next life as a villainess. All routes lead to doom. Volume two. No guns life. Volume two. That is very interesting, how the main character has a gun for a face. Has, has a what for a face? Has an actual gun for a face. He wakes up not knowing what happened to him, and his gun, I mean, no, 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 his face turns into an actual gun, like a large-sized gun in the shape of his head. I kid you not. <laughs> I've not seen it. I've just seen art about okay, it. Okay, yeah, like, man, we're gonna have to have a dog here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's what it is. Um, okay, Ren in the Gray World, Volume Five. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Reincarnated as a sword, Volume Three. Reincarnated as a sword. Yep. Reincarnated as a sword. Okay, we are rein being <laughs> reincarnated as various things yes, now. Yes, very, <laughs> very. Things. First it was a slime. Now it's a sword. <laughs> now it's a sword. Okay, um, Seven Little Sons of the Dragon. And then, show me an sample. I was abducted by an elite all-girls school as a simple commoner. <laughs> Volume 11. <laughs> That sounds like Oran High School Host Club. But, except in Oran High School Host Club, there are guys and girls. 
not just Oron being an old boys academy. The thing is, is that Haruhi wasn't abducted. He got pulled in on accident. This guy got straight up abducted by <laughs> some dudes wearing black suits and glasses and shoved the poor guy into a car. He literally got abducted on his way to his normal high school life. <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <sighs> Tales of Beres... Hold on. Bersera. One. <laughs> See, I told her she would butcher it's the torture. names. I know. I can't pronounce it right. That's a shame. <laughs> I never learned to read. Ma. <laughs> okay, the seven deadly sins. Thirty-five. Yurasue Yatasura, Volume Four. I'm butchering them again, but oh well. Wolf in Parchment. New Theory, Spice and Wolf, Volume Four, and then. Wonderland, Volume 4. Those are the releases for Tuesday. And then the, there's only two releases for yesterday. On Wednesday, the 20th. Um, ACCA, the complete series, Blu-ray, was, Blu -ray was released in Australia. Or you do know you got to read a lot, right? Yes, I do have to read a lot. I know that. <laughs> what is this? I'm curious about this. Oh, wait. Yeah. I've seen this. Yep, it re was released in Australia, so now we know what UA means. Wow, it is forty nine ninety five in Australia. Wow. Good luck to all the Australians that want to buy that. And then one manga release was in the U.S. yesterday. H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, Volume 2. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. She's got a long list to read. I do. Since we since we'll probably be closing the holiday, let's read on. Okay, so on the 25th of November, Fruits Baskets, Volume 1, um, Fruits Baskets Season 1, Part 1, will be released in the UK on Blu-ray and DVD, as well as a collector's edition combo Blu-ray. Garden of Sinners movie collection, collector's edition Blu-ray will also be released in the UK. Looks like these are all UK releases. So, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Part 1 and 2. Part 1 will be a standard edition Blu-ray, while Buy Part it. 2... Will be a collector's edition Blu-ray. Buy it. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> Seriously, it is. And then we have <coughs> Blue S Twin Star Exorcist parts three and four, both with DVD and with limited edition booklets. Ooh, that's fun. Buy the collector's edition. And then, last one for the month of November <sighs> is the 26th of November. <laughs> okay, Blank Canvas, My Soul Card Artist's Journey, Volume 3. Car Capture Sakura Cleared Card 6, Fire Force 17, Generation Witch, Volume 5, If I Could Reach You 2. <laughs> um... Magic Knights, Reverta 25th Anniversary Manga Box Set 1, um, Monster Girl Doctor Volume 5, um, Servamp Volume 13, The Concorded Mouse Dreams of Cheese. <laughs> yeah, all, all my dream of cheese, so that's self-explanatory. To Love Rue Volumes 17 through 18, UQ Holder, 18, um, Witchcraft Works, Volume 13, and then Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs, Volume 7. Now, those were all of your manga releases, literally heading into November, letting, 
basically coming up next in week. December. December, November. I said November. These were all from November. All of these. You said mean. heading into November. I know. Uh, my brain's not functioning as it should be. <laughs> 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 so bad. <laughs> but those were all of your <coughs> manga DVD releases in your areas of the country, wherever you are. Areas of the world. Areas of countries, worlds, one of those! <laughs> those are all the releases that will be, as we, that are all out there, that as we exit November and head into December. So, enjoy! What do you got? <laughs> oh, I got a few. Yay, more few. <laughs> Ah, uh, these are your DVD and Blu-ray releases for November the 26th. 07, Ghost. Complete collection, Blu-ray. I don't even know what that is. Oh, my. Ooh. I was put out by Eastern Star, so. Of course, we wouldn't know. <laughs> Oh, I had no idea. Uh, Conception, complete series, Blu-ray. Haiku. Love that series one. three. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it. Uh, uh, season three, complete collection, DVD or Blu-ray, whichever your heart desires. And it's episodes one through ten. Oh, I don't know if I should read that one. Might as well. Oh, well. Uh, Hentai Heaven, Collection 9, Blu-ray. And it's not for anybody under 18, so it's adult. Yep. Juni Tyson, Zodiac War, Season 1, Blu-ray. Essentials. Ooh. Kyo Caramel. R O V A. Series. Blu ray. Hmm. Another thing I gotta buy. Uh, my roommate is a cat. Complete series Blu ray. I loved that series. It was so cute. So now you can go buy it. <laughs> no, I can just rewatch it on Funimation now. But they need more seasons. They only have one season. Complete series, my foot. They only have one season. Well, it's probably just the one season. Yeah. Uh, Nambaka. Complete series. Blu ray. Natsumi. Yujin, Yujin Cho. The movie, Imperial Bond, Blu-ray. <laughs> Nutcracker Fantasy, <laughs> Blu-ray. Whoa, joy. <laughs> I, I believe it's probably what I think it is. Yeah. Like the Nutcracker? It, the yeah. actual nut, uh, like an anime version of the Nutcracker? Uh, da, 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 da. I see Claire. That's yeah. mentioned in the Nutcracker. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to have to buy it. Yeah. But I have no DVD player. Crap. Anywho. One, p yeah, one Piece episode of Sky P? Skypus? No. <laughs> I'm reading it from the corner. That's why I can't read it. TV special. DVD Blu-ray combo set. Hmm. Penguin Highway limited edition Blu-ray. A Silent Voice, the movie. Limited edition on Blu-ray. That was a great movie. That was a very good movie. I cried at the end. It was that emotional. It was two hours. That movie was two hours, and it was worth the two hours. <laughs> It was worth the two hours watching it on Netflix. Space Adventure Cobra, the movie. 4K Ultra 
HD Ooh, Blu-ray. You get that real clean. You get that ultra. Ultra clean. HD. Yeah. <laughs> 4K. Yup. Not 3K. That's 4K. That's so last year. Mm-hmm. 4K is the new. Yeah. Uh, Star Blazer Space uh, uh, Battleship Yamamoto. 2202 Part 2. <laughs> That's a lot of twos. 2202. DVD, <laughs> DVD Blu-ray combo set. And then we have Zillion Complete Series Blu-ray Essentials. Mm. Now I'm moving on to December the 3rd. Gosh, the first one right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Angel Blade. Yeah, uh, it's you know on what? Blu-ray and it's not for anybody under 18. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bleach. Collection number five. Blu-ray. I already have that. <laughs> uh, episodes 112 through 139. Yeah, I already got it. Uh, Chain Chronicle. Th- the Light of... Uh, yeah... Have a please. Uh, hmm. Hatius? Hmm. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it's on Blu ray either way. Hmm. Um, Funan. Blu ray DVD combo set. Is this a zombie? <laughs> I am not a zombie. Uh, complete series. Season one and two on Blu-ray. K on Ultimate Collection, Blu-ray. Kiss him, not me. Complete series on Blu-ray. Essentials. Now that series is basically about a girl that is obsessed with boy love. But she's got four guys going for her attention. But the thing is, she'd rather see them make out then have one of them make out with her. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. But funny weird. Not creepy, ugly weird. Koro Sensei Quest. Blu-ray Essentials. Meiji Tokyo. Renka. Complete series. I'm watching that. That is really good. My My Miracle. Blu-ray. Are you sure it's not May May Miracle? Or it could be May May Miracle. <laughs> um, Seven Senses of the Reunion on Blu-ray. Hmm. Suga. Something. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Manga and Anime Kire. Complete series, Blu-ray essentials. So... Sugakire. Sugakire. That's what it sounds like all together. All right. Sounds good to me. (laughs) Anyway, those are your DVD releases for next week. And I don't know why and I did the following into, week. Yeah, they did the following week. I well, no, the reason why I did into the following week because we don't come in until Thursday. So True. yes, that is for your w- weekly, the Tuesday leading up to Thanksgiving, and because we're probably not going to be here heading into you know Thanksgiving week since we won't be here. Um, and then uh, the following Tuesday, because we don't come back in until Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I only got, you know, a couple things for Monday, then Tuesday the 3rd, and December 2nd, and then heading into Wednesday, and then that's about it. Um, there's only one thing that's released on the 2nd for, um, you know, what's being released, and that is a... Soul Eater Complete Collection Blu-ray that'll be released in the UK on the 2nd. That's the only thing on the 2nd that's being released of December. <laughs> but, eh. For those of you who have not watched Soul Eater, do watch it. 
All right. So as far as Hawkeye goes, yes, we're going back to the MCU. Woo! Um, as far as Hawkeye goes, yes, he was supposed to have his own standalone movie. But for some reason, Kevin Feige had some second thoughts about putting Hawkeye in his own standalone movie film. Mm -hmm. He figured it would be better to, for the small screen to show it, show it, uh, to show how Jeremy Renner's character passes the torch on to the next bow wielding assassin. Hmm. Which is going to be his daughter. So. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That was the last thing for the MCU. Now on to... What? The Masked Singer. Woohoo! All right. So for those of you who watched The Masked Singer last night, uh, they had a special guest star on there, Joel McHale. Mm. And first off, it was the Flamingo versus... The leopard. Right. Uh, La Flamingo came out ready to fight. I mean, she was ready. She mm -hmm. sang Lady Marmalade by Patty Flabelle. And then the leopard sang September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Love that. But the crowd didn't as much. And they went with the Flamingo, and the Flamingo won that battle. Up next, it was the Flower versus the Rottweiler. The Flower sang Alone, which is by Heart. And the Rottweiler sang Grenade by Bruno Mars. Um, vote came down. The Rottweiler won the face-off. Then it was the leopard and versus the, the flower. flower in the smackdown. In the smackdown, uh, the leopard sang "Don'tcha" by the by the pussy <laughs> cat dolls, and Nicole Scherzinger, being one of the judges, she is basically was a part of the pussy cat dolls. Yeah, and they're no longer. A she thing. actually sang the song. Yes. <laughs> Um, and the flower, she sang Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Mm. Um, and the leopard won, mm -hmm. and the flower was revealed. It was Miss Patty mm -hmm. LaBelle. Yeah. Which, as... Yeah, you know, we both thought it was because mm -hmm. there's nobody on earth that can make that kind of sound uh -uh, like she no. can. Mm -mm. Oh no, 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 no. Patty Lavelle did an amazing job blasting the first two rounds, but now yeah. let's see, we're down to four. Now in the Mass Singer, we have the Leopard, the Flamingo, the Fox, and the Wattweiler left for next week. You're down to four. Wait, no, 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 no. And the butterfly. The butterfly uh, yeah, still remains. Yeah, butterfly. I think that's it. It's the fox, um, the leopard, the flamingo, the wattweiler, and the butterfly are left. Oh, and the tree. The tree's left. Yeah. So that's I was going to say, there's got to be another um, one. <laughs> I can't remember who else. There's so many. They had a lot this year. They did. They had a they lot. They did. All right. Oh, and thingamajig. Oh yeah, that, 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 that's seven. That's seven. That's seven. There's seven Jay. left now. Um, cannot forget. Thank but that's Jay. it. So we're down to seven. Well, actually, no. Hold on. We got the butterfly, thingamajig, the Wattweiler, the flamingo, the leopard, the fox, and the tree. So yeah, seven. We're down to seven. We're down to seven people. Then soon it'll be the. Season finale, just not now. And thanks to uh, someone's smart idea, our board is messed up. So they decided to write on their Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Bakugan. Bakugan, really? 
so um now we gotta I'm gonna put write a nice little note on here saying if you write hmm, if you write we might need a again we, we will kill you you know what we might just have to get our own whiteboard and then just bring it in because that way they don't mess up our stuff at first they never did that but now they did I uh, I'm not happy I'm not happy either here, I'll just tell I you. I don't even know what we have. Here, I got gotcha. you. That's why I put it up on my anime and emo. Um, and let's see, our first contest that we had. Um, we had on the Ruby side. The Ruby side was on that side, and then Soul Leader was on the other side. Well, while this side... Um Dries. Okay. Um, I'll go with the Soul Eater side for that one. Um, let's see. Okay, we had Professor S Dr. Stein versus Noah. Is this what we're going with n right now? No, no, no. We're. Are you talking about like? Um, I'm just talking about to put it back on there. Uh, it was Dr. Stein versus Noah. And then Dr. Stein moved on in that first bracket. And then Def the Kid just put DTK <laughs> versus Justin. And then Def the Kid moved on in that one. Then uh, Maka versus Black Star. I still don't get why Black Star moved on in that one. That was stupid. But again, that's what you guys voted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh my god, that was just stupid. But that's what you guys voted. Yeah. Um, you know that that's the fans' opinion, not mine. If I would have said anything otherwise, I would have said Maka. And then Asura versus Krona. Asura? Mm-hmm. A-S-U-R-A. -A. Oh, as okay. And who was the other? Krona? Krona. C-O-R-O-N-A. And then Asura moved on in that round. Ruby side is dry. Okay, and then here's what we have for the Ruby side. Um, Adam Torres. My God. What the heck are they doing? <sighs> Sorry, y'all. People are loud. Loud. Okay, Adam Torres. Versus Hazel Rain Art. Rain Art. And then Adam um, moved on. I'll just put Adam. Next. Crow versus Cinder. Uncle Crow. Uh. R O W. Like the word crow, but, um, you know, with H the. Versus Q. who? Cinder. Cinder fall. And Cinder moved on. Next. Ozpin versus Salem. Salem advanced in that round. And then Raven versus Amber. And then Raven moved on in that round. All right. Okay. I think we're up to... We're up to speed now. All righty. Good grief. Okay. 
Now let us see. Um, whoop, wrong thing. Mm, nope. Nope. Did I not put it on there? Gosh dang it. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, we were busy trying to make sure everything was working. Yeah, right. we had to make sure um, John Gremion's interview went smashingly. And it did. It went terrific. It went, it went awesome. Here we go. Alrighty. Do -do 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 -do. And since we got it up now, here we are. First bracket Adam Torres versus Cinder. So there were 13 votes cast. Nine people liked it. Adam had 38.5. While Cinder had 61.5. Dang, that was a close, close, close race. Then our next one is Salem versus Raven. There were 20 votes cast. 10 people liked it. And we had one comment from Hydellus. So she basically put a comment saying like, Ah, crumba, I caramba. I guess peeps didn't pay attention to season six. Basically saying that no one paid attention to season six where, uh, um, well, I'm not even caught up on Ruby, so clearly she, she knows something that we don't. Um, Salem had 30% of the votes, while Raven had 70. Oh, we forgot to put the light on. <laughs> oh, uh, who, who is it? Nikita. Oh. Oh. Come on, we'll have to let her in. Yeah. Hey, Andy. Okay. All right, so on the other side... Which is Soul Eater. Soul Eater. Let's see. So, all right. So, our second soul for the Soul Eater side, we had Dr. Stein versus Death the Kid. There were 28 votes cast. 11 people liked it. And then there were three comments. But I think that was just the question and answer that I did. So, D Professor Stein had 42.9, while. The while well, Death the Kid had 57.1. So, Kid moves on. And that's my fault for not turning the light on. Yeah. And then our last battle is between Black Star. In Asara. So, all right. So there were 21 votes cast. 11 people liked it. Black Star, 33.3. Wow. Asara, 66.7. We are down to the final four. Woo! Down to the finals, y'all. Final four, baby. We are down to the finals. It's Cinder versus Raven. And then on for the Ruby side, and then for the Soul Eater side, we have Asada versus Death the Kid, baby. Oh, boy. This is shaping up very, very nicely. Oh, I'm going to have to put this bell way back in here. Yeah, put it way in the bottles of that desk. <laughs> All right. <sighs> so hopefully nobody will have an excuse for accidentally rubbing it up against it and taking everything off the board. Yeah. And also, let's see. Yeah, we are close to wrapping that up. Now the next thing is, after we're done with that battle... 
what are we going to do next? <laughs> oh, good question. Because we're getting... Go ahead, wait for me. Yeah, since I'm the garbage disposal man. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but either way, yeah, we got... Yeah, just... Those will be... Once we're, you know, windled down to the final two, then what else are we going to do? We could make pasta. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, but I want pasta. So hungry. <laughs> Let's see. No. Three point five <laughs> Battle Royale games. Mugen? Mm. The Android stream games something. Mm. Let's see. Pick a show. Uh, Demon Slayer. We haven't gotten... Anime versus animation? Anime versus real life? Anime versus Marvel? Cartoons. No! <laughs> Bless you. <sighs> Thank you. Mm. Even though that was the weirdest sneeze I've ever heard. <laughs> but well, I didn't want to sneeze all over the place. Mm -hmm. No, we're not doing cartoon versus anime. No. Um, anime versus manga? What's the difference? Um, anime Everything. comes from manga. They draw inspiration from the manga. They don't go, well, except for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Where they went from the manga to the anime series. What? I thought I heard something. Oh, back it was in there. me doing this with the things. Oh, I see something. Oh, Lord. <laughs> ha. This ought to be good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goku. No. What? Ah! Superman? <laughs> That's in there? <sighs> Come on, there's gotta be... Naruto? No, we've done Naruto already. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Wonder if Glitter Force is in there. That's a magical girl anime. <laughs> It's just showing what the difference between. That? Oh, wait, I've seen that before. Nehalina? Basically, some weird uh, plant monster. I'm not talking about just the character Sailor Man, I'm talking about the show. Yeah, they don't get anything regarding the. Uh, All right, let's do. So. Yes. This is Sailor Moon Crystal. No. Just giving them differences between you know the. I don't want to know the differences. I want. A good show to put it up against. Crystal versus Classic. Eh, it's not going to give us anything. Find something else. But I think this is really something we really haven't touched. Done. Um, just can't think of anything else. Um, we could try Black Butler versus something, but I don't know. I don't know. There's not that many characters that fight. Yeah. 
and from what I've seen of the show. Mm. I don't hear it's that just anything. music. Um Oh, I know how. <laughs> Death battle. <laughs> Sailor Moon versus Spider Man. Are you crapping me right now? Really? Sailor Moon versus Spider Man. You have got to be joking me right now. Sailor Moon versus Wonder Woman. Sailor Moon versus Ben 10. Sailor Moon versus Superman. Jeez, these are lame. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ah! One Punch Man versus the Sailor Moon Scouts. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Would that be a good one? I find it funny. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. <laughs> one Punch Man versus Sailor Moon. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to... We'd have to pick out... A lot of people are probably going to say, Oh... Why didn't you pick out something else? Try Madoka versus Sailor Moon. It's both magical girl animes. One darker than the other one. <laughs> Madoka Kaname? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. We could do Vampire Knight versus something, but I don't know what. There's not very many... No. There's not very many fight scenes in Vampire Night. That's the thing. True. True. It's not more of a fighting type. Ugh. So hard! Well, is there anybody else in that show that fights? Um, let's see. Madoka fights. Uh, Homura Kemi. Mommy Totome. Um, I'll tell you uh, what. I'll do the Sailor Scouts. Okay, I got Matoka Magica then. Yes, because I've okay. seen how you watched it. It's a pretty dark show. It's supposed to be a magical girl he show. He looks scary. That is almost... That is uncanny! Oh my gosh. We're looking at a picture of Tom Hanks. As, as Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers, and he looks almost exactly like him. It is insane. The, the just the identical, you know, looking at them, but even both side by side, they look exactly the same. It's freaky. The uh, Sailor Scouts and Tuxedo Mask versus Madoka Kemi. Uh, yeah, because Canada. there's probably a guy in the Madoka Kaname. Nope. Monica is actually a girl. Then why are they bringing Tuxedo Mask into the fight? I don't know. They put it in parentheses. It's probably not to be taken into consideration. Uh, you're not in parentheses in there. Right here. Ugh. Basically, they're pitting all the Sailor Scouts and Tuxedo Mask versus one girl. Oh, I mean, the when we do it... Yeah, yeah, the way we do it, we just do it by character vote. But either way, uh, yeah, I got Madoka Magica, and then you can cover, um, the thing is there's only, what, there's Madoka, Sayaka, um, Tokyo, um, Kami, and then Hamura. There's only five characters that are in Madoka Magica, and there's more, um, characters in Sailor Moon than there's that. There's gotta be more. There's only five of them that fight. The rest of them are just bystanders and innocent people. You'll have to pick pawns. 
Tons. Explosives. Mm, I can think of one. One more. That's an expensive. And then what you do, I, I shouldn't give her this advice, <laughs> is throw a sacrificial lamb in there. <laughs> you put put the pawns up again. Put one pawn up against you know each character, each main character that fights. Okay. It's the only way I can really tell you. Yeah, sounds like it. Sorry. <laughs> eh. So after this one, it's going to be the Sailor Scouts versus the Sailor Moon Scouts against Madoka Kaname. Not just her, but the other um, uh, magical girls. That yeah, are the Monica other magical, magical girls in there. We're the just other reading what's dark there. Dang. Thi Madoka Magica is probably one of the most darkest magical girl series ever. Forget Sailor Moon. That blows Sailor Moon right out of the water. This one is really, really dark. But either way, that that will be our next battle royale. Yep. Oh. Ooh, I feel tired. I'm hungry. I want to take a nap. <laughs> she, it's official. She's <laughs> old. Oh, you know what we haven't done? Why don't we do Dead Man Wonderland? Against who? Okay, so Dead Man Wonderland, where they can manipulate their own blood to form weapons and junk. Um, have we done Full Metal Alchemist yet? From my distinct knowledge, we have not done Full Metal Alchemist. I don't think we have. I say that would be better. Dead Man Wonderland versus Full Metal Alchemist. I'll, I'll do the... You got Full Metal, I got Dead Man? Yeah. All right. Change of plans! Dead Man Wonderland versus Full Metal Alchemist. And we're including she characters seems from too excited to do this. I am. And who what's there not to be excited about? Plus, the thing is you can use characters from either the original running of Full Metal or from Brotherhood. So balls in your court. Especially for that one. Oh. I think you gotta turn it the other way. Think it goes I don't think so. Are you sure it goes that way? She has to put the mic back. Because <laughs> it's hers and she bought it. Yeah. But at least we know it works. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, at least we know that mic works for uh, future preferences. And then also we'll have to make sure we plug up Shar's camera that you guys see her on. Um, up into our little Elgato system. The next time we do that. Next time we get an interview with someone. Yep. John Gramion is awesome! And so is John Swayze. John Swayze, um... They both dealt with... I would say, well... John Swayze dealt with our typical... Technical difficulties. Um, on s um, basically on Saturday when we did his interview. Not, you know, last Saturday, but couple moons ago. But either way, we got it done, and then John Gremion's interview was a success. So that's Went another much smoother. one. Yeah, way smoother. Because uh, we number one, we were prepared, mm -hmm. and number two, uh, we had a little bit of help getting set up. So, but now we know for future preference for future not preference reference re for reference for future reference. We would have to make sure we get all of the stuff pre-set up to our guest convenience, not for us. Yes. Because that's unprofessional. Oh, it is. I hate boxes. Yeah, boxes are paid in the tush. Try and get everything put away. <laughs> um... Anyway, so we'll put this back for another time. Mm -hmm. uh, Sailor Scouts versus Madoka, Ma uh, Madoka Magica. 
Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm the only one that can pronounce it. <laughs> and uh, instead, we will do Dead Full Metal Alchemist versus Dead Man Wonderland. Now I'm gonna give okay. I'm gonna give everybody here for those of you who have not watched Dead Man Wonderland, listen up. Now, basically, it starts out with Ganta, a kid that's just going through high school, having a normal time, having a normal life. He goes to class with his two best friends. Next thing you know, out of nowhere, this guy in like red clothing. Just floats outside Ganta's classroom window. And then out of nowhere, a huge... Like, there's no actual explosion, but, like, a huge blast happens. And his entire class gets obliterated. I mean, desks are flown everywhere. Glass is broken. But here's the thing. Ganta is the only one that survives this. Huh. He's the only one alive. And then this mysterious man in red gives Ganta this weird power. And then later he's trialed for mass murder of his entire class. And he's put on death row. Let alone, yeah, he's put on death row. And let alone the, the place, the prison that he's actually attending is an amusement park that he went to with his two best friends before they got killed. And all of the prisoners have to compete in these sick, twisted, dev, you know, survival games in order to make it through their death sentence. And all these people that pay money to go to the park watch all of these prisoners die. And they have no idea. Huh. For those of you who have not watched Dead Man Wonderland, yeah. I thought it was weird at first when I first watched it, but then I got hooked on it. The action sequences are killer. Definitely watch it for yourself. It's a bit, there's a bit of, I wouldn't, there's not a lot of gore. There's some gore in it, but not like where it's like way over the top, you know, showing entrails and bleeding hearts, like ripped out of, Guts or Unlike Helsing Ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> there's only there's only one wait, hold. Oh my gosh, Big Vignon is live right now. I kid you not. I just got a notification about it. Oh, it already happened. Dang it. Well, that was audio. I probably shouldn't have played, but I played it anyway. <laughs> oh, it was. He was just reminding everybody. Just reminding everybody. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to make it, but I. I'll I did ask for an autograph. I'll try. I have to see what my paycheck entails because now I got like late fees on my card, and I just gotta see. I'm like negative two hundred some dollars right now. I didn't even buy anything. It's something else. It's family stuff that's going on. Um, but I'll have to see. If I have enough after I pay my bills and everything, I'm getting a Vic Mignogna autograph. <laughs> uh, but either way, um, yeah, Dead Man Wonderland, um, definitely worth the watch. It's only got one season, so if you guys see it towards all the way to the end, yeah, they need to get more on that. I like Dead Man Wonderland. They need to bring that back. Because they just left it hanging on a huge cliffhanger. And everybody knows. Oh, let's see. What did he say? Uh, oh, John Gremion just messaged me on Twitter. He's saying, thanks so much for the interview today. Where will it be available online? <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, my good sir. Showed him on YouTube, so. Plus, he's already subscribed, so he'll get the notification either way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but either way, we thank John Gremion for being on here. 
And also, also for subscribing. And we are, speaking of subscriptions, we are working towards 100 subscribers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The 100th subscriber will have their choice of John Wick 3 Parabellum or Spider Mick. Spider Man 3. Far Spider Man from Far From Home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spider Mick. Spider Mick. <laughs> Ooh. It's kind of, uh, you know. Is Spider Man advertising McDonald's now? <laughs> no, it's a combination between Spider Man and John Wick. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, so, subscribe, hit that notification bell, slap that like button, and as always, sharing is caring. And leave your com comments about your favorite anime character below in the comment section. And also, we are on Twitter at Apocalypse Otaku and Apocalypse Otaku 1. For all you otaku knots out there that are actually on social media, make sure you guys Follow us on those three social media platforms. We are not yet on Instagram because Instagram is just too freaky. <laughs> 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 no, no, we, we just choose not to have an Instagram page because none of us will probably even use it. Either way, we are trying to reach our goal of 100 subscribers. Make sure you follow us on our social media links. You know, you, um, YouTube as well. Um, get your hit your notifications, like, subscribe, share, um, follow us on Twitter as I mentioned before. Um, and also, if you guys want to have your favorite voice actors such as John Swayze, John Germion, Vic Mignogna, Todd Hapricorn, all those lovely men, all the all those lovely names that we have mentioned numerous times, contact your local cons that are in your area. The cons are for us. They're for the fans that enjoy watching anime. It's not just for and the And oftentimes, you know, fans don't think, well, what can I do, you know, to get my favorite voice actor, you know, at my con? All you have to do is repeatedly bug ask them. them. Ask them. Bug them. Bug, bug them, them. Bug them. Bug them. Bug them like the plague. Bug them until they give in and find the antidote. <laughs> I mean, you send them a message every day if you have to. Uh, say, I want, th I would love it if you would invite this person to the con. Um, you can email them um, through their site or everyone's got a Twitter. Bug them on Twitter. <laughs> or both. I've done both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. I've bugged, <laughs> I've bugged all three of our local cons here on Twitter numerous times. And I, think I we even both have. emailed them. I even emailed Colossal Con, the main lady that's in charge of having the guests there. I bugged her to invite Vic, Todd, Travis, Steve, Chuck, Johnny, John Gramillion, John Swayze. Crispin Freeman. Crispin Freeman, yes. <laughs> You're like, did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? And then you mentioned it. <laughs> but either way, we the cons are meant for the fans that enjoy the animes that these these lovely people that have lent their voices to these characters that we all grew up with um, over the years. This is for us to see our anime characters from behind the mic actually there in person. Well, come out from behind the mic. Yeah. I guess so. Did someone die? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> that, yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we need more mm. better soundproofing in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but either, oh. either way, though, we reach out to our local cons, Ohio Con, Matsuri Con here in Ohio, and Colossal Con. Um, to bring such voice actors as uh, John Gremion, John Swayze, Steve Bloon, Crispin Freeman, Vic Mignogna, Todd Habercorn, Travis Willingham, Johnny Bosch, and so many more. Lucy Christian was another one. Wendy Powell. Yeah. Wendy Lee. Wendy Lee. Um, I would like to invite Sherry. Sherry Lynn. I like her. <laughs> Michelle um, Ruff. Mm-hmm. 
Bryce Pappenbrook, if you will. But either way, we want these men and women of that have voiced all of the characters that we know, um, that we have watched, to come here to our state of Ohio. If not, then we're going to make a parody video. <laughs> not that. <laughs> No, not literally a parody video, but remember I told you about my video vision of, you know, I can't say anything. I'm not bringing it up now. But I did have a vision about a video to let the cons hear us. Because if, they, if we can't reach them with words, we will reach them with action. Basically that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm running on adrenaline right now. She's <laughs> running on non-food. Non-food! Ah! <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, we are going to end it for today. Yes. So we will be back. Uh, let's see. Next week is Thanksgiving. So happy. we will be back on the 5th. Mm -hmm. So y'all have a happy Thanksgiving and gobble till you wobble. Yep. Gobble till you wobble, talk or not. And enjoy your Thanksgiving. Let's hope it's filled with food, anime, and, and friends. family. <laughs> I said friends, you said family. Either way, it's filled with both. <laughs> well, friends and family. Mm -hmm. Well, we said both. We, you said you said a uh, family. I said friends. Or so. Either way, it's still included um, oh, yeah. in both. But either way, peace out, Otaku Knots. We will see you on the fifth of December. Enjoy your holiday and watch anime till you die. Oh, yeah.